Belina Mai Kako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by talking stories in front of a live audience in the world renowned Blue Note Hawaii. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm not used to the, the applause. <laughs> I'm your host, Kamaka, and welcome to our first ever live audience podcast. Now you can applause. <laughs> <laughs> I am so stoked. Just as a reminder that all of our proceeds from the ticket sales will be going to Help Maui Rise, which is the only direct to Ohana initiative that allows for equitable distribution of a single contribution among numerous families. They're doing some great things and making it easy for everyone to help out with just one click. It bypasses having to choose between families in need. They use data to disperse funds in an equitable way among recipient families. It's tax deductible. Each recipient has been carefully vetted and verified by their team members, and there's about 1,600 ohana and growing. So for those listening to this, this will, um, I'll have a link in the description of this episode if you feel it in your heart to donate. This will also go out as a live, I mean as a, an episode, but you're just witnessing this all live. All right, we have an amazing show tonight filled with some surprises. So let's get started and introduce our special, special guest for tonight. Our guest tonight is a Native Hawaiian Emmy Award-winning wahine from the island of Oahu. This Kalihi girl has over 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry working for MTV, NBC's Access Hollywood, Billboard Live, and interviewing some of the biggest celebrities in the biz. She came home in 2016 to work as a weekend weather anchor for KHON and now has her very own talk show, Talk Story, which debuted in 2019 to rave reviews as the only one-hour Hawaiian variety show in the state. Within four weeks, it became the number one primetime show in Hawaii, receiving two Emmy nominations in its first season and winning a 2020 Regional Emmy Award. She is a friend of the podcast, and for the second time, I am taking her away from her job as a host and putting her in the guest seat tonight. She is awesome, she is intelligent, she is hulali, she is one of my inspirations, and she is the queen of talk story. She is the one and only Mokena Maduli. Aloha, welcome to Keep It Aloha Podcast. How are you This doing? is really fun. Thank you for having me. I am honored to be the first in your live. How do you like the live show format so far? It's cool. A little cool. nerve-wracking? No. I, so the thing is, I don't get nervous. Oh. So people ask me when I have guests, and maybe you can relate to this. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime I, I feel like I'm getting nervous, I just switch it to excitement. There you go. Yeah, because I there's no that. physiological difference in the brain. Like, your body does, reacts the same when you're nervous and when you're excited. So you just got to like change your perspective. I love that. That's yeah. very cool. Good job. So I'm super excited. <laughs> I am yeah, too. And we have a live audience. Have, I am too. Look at this. Need, so many <laughs> familiar faces. Is, a, is this a lot of Kamaka's Ohana? Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I paid everybody to be here. <laughs> he accepts you. They all accept yeah, Venmo. I'm going to be in a lot of debt. We're going to have to erase the 50K again after this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good to see you. Last Thank time you. I was on your show, you Talk were. Story, which, you were which I guest. love, which I tell you, I watch every time after Sunday Night Football. I know. You come on right Are after Are you sad that. football season's over? Uh, no, I think it's a really good season, so I'm satisfied. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm who okay. was your team at the Super Bowl? Oh, I'm asking the questions already. Yeah, see, look at it. <laughs> hey, take it easy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Somebody come get so her. This, this is a true story. Uncle Kata, Kamaka's controller. The, I know. I know. I cannot be controlled. I, no, I've always asked the Nino, and now I'm trusting Kamaka Diaz to ask all the Nino. So yeah, go for yeah. it. You're just crazy. You can kick your feet up, whatever. Just get I love, comfortable. Yeah. Can we just get a round of applause for new, two Native Hawaiians here at the Blue Note? Talking story. Barefoot. Barefoot. Kamako, we can say we played the blue note, and yeah. we're not even, I'm not a musician, are you? Nope. Nope. <laughs> you know, and nope. it's about time that two Hawaiians were here just talking stories. We're all we're doing is talking <laughs> stories. Yeah. I, but the Portuguese will, will take control tonight, okay. if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm censored. Go for it. All right, we got some friends coming in. How's it? Hey, so, hello, everybody. If you listen to this podcast, I start the show off with the same questions every time. Maybe you guys can help me. Where are you from? Where are you grad, and what was it like growing up? 
All right, I am born and raised in Kalihi Valley, Oahu. Uh, yeah, I went to Roosevelt High School, and what was it like growing up? I grew up in a very big Hawaiian Filipino family. We've got lots of cousins, my dad, tons of brothers and sisters, my mom as well, and I had the most beautiful, I think is all of us here in Hawaii, the most beautiful upbringing when you get to be born and raised here from this land, and it was a beautiful upbringing. Yeah, speaking about big Filipino family, I, I knew you were Filipino, and your dad did the most Filipino thing in the back. Of scene. course he did. I showed him the menu that um, you can order from the Blue Note, and he said, where's the adobo? <laughs> was Shout it out to was my dad, pork? by the way. You guys you know my one-man band dad, Katsumaduri? Yeah. <laughs> Yay, he's over here chilling. Yeah, uh, Blue Note, can we get pork adobo on the menu for next time, please? <laughs> he actually makes a pretty mean pork adobo, okay. so Blue Note, if you need a recipe, Katsumaduri's got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... You grew up in Kalihi. You yes. were always around a lot of talent growing up. Always, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of just absorbed it all from a young age. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, you know, my garage growing up in Mount Kalihi was um, just this gathering place of the best of the best in Hawaiian music. And from a very young age, I was in front of the likes and through album making, through my dad, who's a producer, my mom's a promoter and a stage manager, so I just always grew up um, surrounded by so many talented, beautiful people. And now, like fast forward to 25, 30 years later, they're all like, we're so proud of you. And I literally say, I'm so proud of you mm. because I feel like when we talk about Hulali, um, the reason why people are so attracted or magnetic is because every single person and story and mo'olelo that has come through in my lifetime is able to project through me. I feel like I'm a child of Hawaii, mm -hmm. as we all are, mm -hmm. and their um, mele and their music and their songwriting, I feel like I was so lucky to just absorb that in my upbringing. Yeah, and when you're growing up, like for me, I had all the Hawaiian immersion background. I had all the culture, but I didn't appreciate it growing up. Yeah. Sorry, family. Um, <laughs> my dad only speaks Hawaiian to us. I love that. I heard day. you guys yeah. backstage, and I'm just like, you guys are goals. So mahalo, <laughs> uncle. You are my goal. Yeah, so when I went to Hawaiian immersion school from preschool to 11th grade, and like, I wanted to do everything else but that. I wanted to go play sports, go home and play video games, do everything that the normal kids were doing. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to olelo Hawaii in the grocery store and respond back to my dad because... I, f I was embarrassed because everybody would be looking at me. Well, mm. that's how I felt. You know, I felt like the spotlight effect. Yeah. But for you, um, did you not have any of those? Or did you, did you knew from that age, like, wow, I'm really blessed to have all of this right now? I didn't. I did not know. I think now in my 40s, in this sweet decade, <laughs> um, I think I now know how lucky I was to go through. Because they were like, it was like, Uncle Is, Auntie Teresa Bright, Uncle Del Beasley. <laughs> Fiji, Sean Na'uau, Roby Kakalau, and they were just in my garage cruising, hanging out, playing music, talking story, hanging out, and I just thought this was everybody else's auntie and uncle, you know? And I think now I realize, and I'm so grateful for just them to be, you know, be surrounded by them. Yeah, that's so cool. Uncle it is really is, cool, and I, I, I yeah. gotta tell, like, it's only now at this age that I really, really appreciate. I saw Fiji, like, two weeks ago, and he was like, hey, McKenna, like, out of this, like, came to me, and I was just like, it's Fiji. It's Fiji. It's Fiji. Fiji. Yeah. I'm still on a, a four-letter basis with him. <laughs> yeah. We still, we still go Fiji. by Fiji. Yeah. He's amazing. Shout out to Fiji. Yeah. Okay. So you, you grew up, had a great childhood, surrounded by everything, but then you decided to leave for a little bit, right? And that's when you kind of perfected your craft. Yes, it was very important growing up. Um, I would have stayed home forever. I love our homeland and I did not want to leave, but it was really important, um, I think, for my parents for me to go out and spread my wings a little bit and not know or to know and to learn more about what was out there in the world. You know, we come from these small but mighty islands and we it's so small here and so I think for my daddy was like wanting me to go to the mainland and to just or to the continent and to really explore what my options were and he always told me home is only five hours away and that was really important for me to know because that first year of college I was so homesick I would cry and cry and cry like I come from a family where we would be together every week we had things like I grew up in a huge family where my cousins were raised like my brothers and sisters you know after school at uh, elementary school I was dropped off at my uncle Vale's house and had dinner and so I went to the 
continent with my other cousins, but it was not the same. So mm. I was very, very homesick. It was hard, but my parents were like, you got to stay there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what was harder, being away or finding which pair of slippers was yours that when your family <laughs> comes over? Because I, I just imagine so many slippers outside. I know. Um, it was really hard being away, but, you know, when I look back at my life at right now, at this very sweet age that I'm at, like, everything happened the way it was meant to, mm -hmm. and... Um, those slippers, <laughs> you can always get new slippers. <laughs> um, but I just am just in awe of just how everything has come full circle, you know? And I think that I, I'm not sad about moving away. I'm really happy I'm here. But I think the best is still yet to come. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that. And you, you're always doing amazing things. Like I said, like I look up to you as like a host and somebody that brings people together and gets stories out of them. Because like, talking stories, that's what we do in Hawaii. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, I'll change it up a bit. I remember, so I used, I'm always wearing local slippers. He is. I'm giving you some they time to recover. They better be your sponsor, because you say they're so they, much, their name's so much. They do. You better be getting so paid I, for I this, I am an ambassador now. They just got on social media. <laughs> Can somebody call me a Kleenex? <laughs> yeah, could we get say some Kleenex? Again? But basically, so I, growing up, we, everybody has the locals, right? Um, but I've, I think some point in college, I got into reefs. Reefs, oh. you know, they, they got like the bottle opener, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. got like the, mm -hmm. the flask underneath, like That's they had right. all kinds of things, but it was more comfortable and it's thicker. <laughs> but and but they're like fifty or sixty dollars, super expensive. Ooh, locals is like that what? is out of my budget. Yeah, locals were <laughs> like eight dollars. I don't know <laughs> how much, but I remember going to a, a party in like I don't know like college maybe like a friend's party, mm -hmm. and somebody stole my reefs. And ever since then, I just stuck with locals. I was like, this is stupid. Why am I buying $40, $50 reefs when I can just get locals and easily replace it? Yeah. Plus, with the locals, they blister at first when you wear them. But after you get after you get, I don't that, know if this is going to work out well for your sponsorship, <laughs> Brana. <laughs> no pain, no gain. You, you got to you gotta pay your dues. Same with surfing. You know, you got to land on the reef a couple times before, you know, you get, you get good. Um, but... You know it's your slippers because it like molds to your feet. Like as soon my brother does this all the time, Micah, he's not here, but like he always like grabs my slippers and as soon as I, I go outside and put on his, I'm like, Micah, you you have my slippers and he's like, Oh, I don't know. It's like, no, you can just tell. You can tell. I don't know if any local people out there. How are your feet after this marathon? Look, I'm asking a question again. <laughs> My, I mean, my F45 uh, Ohana Yay. over there, they know that. Uh, God bless you guys yeah, for you doing guys F45. Awesome. <laughs> I watch all his videos like, you crazy. Yeah, well, yeah good thing you didn't uh, see the live uh, workout yesterday because I threw up. <laughs> but and I we, saw you were number two. You're getting up there. You're close was, to number uh, yeah, one. I think number one overall for the guys. Yeah, and then number two overall, besides the coaches, the coaches actually did hey, better. But good job. yeah, I went so hard. There's like 10, 10 stations, and you have to do these 10 workouts, 45 seconds, 15 second rest, and I just went way too hard. And I was supposed to modify because I already, so I, I, hurt, I hurt my knee from running the marathon. Like, I had this, this Tell pain. me more. Because <laughs> I, did, I didn't train, so I, I ran like a couple times before the marathon, and then I just like, I'm, I like to think my mind is really strong, so I, I was able to push through. And, uh, you know, my, I had to do a lot of cold plunges uh, to get better. And I felt better. But after I ran again with my dad in Hilo, it started to get sore, that same marathon pain. And then recently, after football season ended, I did soccer, and that same pain came. So I'm, I'm at PT right now. So okay. still healing. All I'm right. Almost missing a toenail, but I don't think people can see that. Me yet. too. We yeah. all. I'm missing. I'm about to miss. Be missing two toenails, but that's from Beyonce from oh. dancing at Beyonce oh, in San Francisco nice. for my birthday. I remember you went to that. I went to that, yeah. and literally, it's not gonna be cute, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I love. I fall off. Go fall off. It's yeah, okay. yeah. It always grows back. Yeah. I do have this really cute blood blister. That's oh in the shape of a heart. All right, I'm not even, I don't know no, what kind no, of I'm podcast even, <laughs> this is. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to show you guys. If you guys want to come look after, just find me. Come um, on, The sponsorships no. <laughs> like this cannot. No. Feet Finder, if you're out there, if you're listening to this, you want to sponsor me. <laughs> no, I I'm going to help you, Brad. I'm going to help you with this. And I legit have a heart shaped blood blister. All right, well, I'm, yeah. th thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speak for the audience. People need we to know. We need that. Mahalo for that. <laughs> I knew that I forgot my shoes on for this reason. You said everything happens for a reason, everything right? Everything happens for a reason. And it was so I could share that. Yeah. Mahalo, mud blister. Can we get a close up? We need the yeah. camera. We need a close Real. up of this Can we for get the, B roll. The close shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hide it behind this this one leg. Yeah. Well, you just told the world about it, so. 
<laughs> it's fine. You guys can, like I said, come. Uh, pay a little extra. You can come in the back. You and can see start it. its own yeah. OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feet Finder. Only feet. We'll do only feet. People are into that. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Anyway, hey, moving on. I love the hustle. <laughs> but now you're not crying. So we did a good job. There you go. So um, you spent some time over there. You had a lot of great experiences. And around 2016, you came back, right? I did, yes. Yeah. And why, why did you come back? Oh, this is such a great story. Um, when I came back, I literally, my kupuna called me back home. I was living in Austin, Texas, and I was trying to get a morning news host job there, and I it wasn't sitting with my now being all the way in Texas, and I was there, and I'm happy that I went. But literally, I just started having these crazy dreams, and I was alone in my apartment in Austin, Texas one day, and I was on the computer, and literally, I'm sitting on the computer, and all I heard was a whisper in this ear, and it said, go home. And I was like, whoa. Then I heard behind me, hale, sweet hale. And I was like, whoa. And I start to, I was like, am I tripping out right now? And, and, I heard a, and I heard another whisper saying, go home. And it was so crazy. And my partner at the time, um, he came home, and I said, hey, I got to talk to you. And he's like, what's up? I'm like, I think I got to go home. <laughs> I heard the whispers, and so we talked about it, and it was so crazy because that night that I said that and I heard the whispers, who I firmly believe are my kupuna, um, a job was listed on the KHON2 website that same day that I heard the whispers. And back then, in 2016, there were timestamps on when the job was listed, and we logged on 15 minutes after this job was listed. And my kupuna said, it is time. And I think that was just about 17 years since I had moved away from home. And it was this magical moment. And within three weeks, I went from Austin back to Los Angeles, where I still had my house, and right back here home to beautiful Honolulu. Wow. I love that story. And, and I know it was really your kupunas, because 17 years ago, Joe Rogan wasn't living in Texas yet. So you didn't have the magic mushrooms over there at that point. So it was I'm pretty sure the they kupuna. were there. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I know. Is that a different story? <laughs> you have, wait, wait, you have a, something right there. Okay. Oh, thank you. Look at you. Yeah. Such a gentleman. Um, so you came back, and you started working for KHON2. And you kind of just fell right into the groove I of it. I fell you into it doing off. weather. Do you yeah. guys remember seeing me do weather? Anybody in here? I got it. Oh, yeah. It's like trade winds. <laughs> <laughs> mostly sunny or mostly cloudy. <laughs> or a hurricane. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I was like, and I, uh, that uh, Justin Cruz, who I consider one of my mentors, I was like, he was like, where do the trade winds come from? I was like, the south? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, but it was really fun. And you know what that helped me build during, like, hello, like I think about it now, it was a weather anchor, mm -hmm. um, was really, and what was so important to me now that I look back on it was being trusted by my community mm -hmm. to even tell, tell everyone, like, if we were having, even weather like today, like, hunker down, be safe, but, you know, protect yourself. Um, and that's where I started to build the trust in our Lahui, mm -hmm. I felt like. And that was really helpful because... I had moved home and I was so intimidated to come home because I didn't know that I had a place here. I didn't know yet that what I was gonna do. I had, I had intentions. I had a little idea of, you know, I'm a very big vision boarder, as you know, and um, I wasn't quite sure. And now, six or seven years later, this ride has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you just took off and you created a, I mean, you were already kind of known, but you just really created a name for yourself. And I'm just grateful that your mentor was Justin Cruz and not Guy Hoggy, because I don't know if you would have <laughs> built trust in this hey, community with that. I will yeah. rep Guy Hoggy, okay? I <laughs> no. love that brother. Uh, so so I, I, I bring him up because I had him on my podcast in one of the early episodes, and we talked about how, you know, the memes like Lie Hoggy and how when... The, How'd that go over with him? <laughs> no, no, and, he, and, and like he, he leans into it, and I love it. But so he, he told me about the misconception of that the people reading the weather, they're not, they're not the ones like predicting the weather. They're just saying what people Correct. gave them. And that it, belongs or, to the National Weather Service. Yes, exactly. So he's just, he's just reading what they're telling him. Correct. And sometimes it's correct, sometimes it's not. Aye. So, you know, I guess you're more correct than he was at the time, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not going to go on this podcast <laughs> saying I'm that, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you do it. But yeah, guy, guy is awesome. I, I loved when he was on it. He was such a cool guy. That was... 
No pun intended. <laughs> Komaka's next job is going to be stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah. Our special guest tonight is two more. <laughs> I'm excited about these special guests, by the way. Komaka would not tell me. Yes, and you I guessed. Gotta, I thought I thought you really knew who it was. Well, you. I think you. Did you send some ploys? Because a couple people text me today. It's like, see you tonight. I'm like, okay. Maybe they meant like in the audience. Oh, perfect. And okay. if they're not in the audience, they're fake friend. Okay. Yeah, they own them. <laughs> You're not real, Josh yeah. Tatofi. <laughs> yeah, I I tried getting Josh Tatofi, you know. He's busy, what? but he had a couple of shows right before this. Oh, okay. So Josh yeah. is not here tonight? It's not Josh. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. It's all right. We got two more guests. We can replace you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. Hey, you I'm know what? Joking. It takes a strong man to talk back to me, so I'm going to take that. You get it, Kamaka. You can never be replaced. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Except by your dad, maybe, who's also <laughs> not in, so <laughs> we got another Maduli here. <laughs> He would be a good... You should have my dad on your yeah. podcast. I'm scared. I, he's a legend. <laughs> he is a legend. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so one one video that I want to talk about, because you, you came back, and I think I was leaving in 2016, but you had this one viral interview. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Yes. And I, th- I think that was the first time I've ever, I ever saw you. And at that, yeah. I remember th- thinking, of, oh, this is super funny, but I didn't... In my head, it wasn't clicking like, oh, this is McKenna Maduli. It wasn't until I came back and I started a podcast and I, or I started seeing you on Talk Story. I was like, oh, that was the same person. Um, so what, what were you doing? You were like going to different gas stations and <laughs> like, how did that happen? Because that was like one of the most viral Hawaii videos ever. I got it. Yeah. Do you guys all know what he's talking about? Maybe yeah. You can okay. Explain to him. So and if not, watch moment. this after. Yeah. We'll Maybe watch you can it. even Google it right now. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, don't yeah. listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this moment was so, and I got to tell you, and I will go on record saying at that point in my career, I'd been home for a year. Um, but like, I've, you know, at that point, I'd interviewed the likes of like Oprah and Stevie Wonder and like all these huge artists. And my favorite person to interview was Marcella Resentes from Wainai. Yeah. <laughs> the best. And you know what it was? It was that she was so real, she was so pure, and like you can't, what happened in that video, you can't get anywhere else. Like it was so perfect. Yeah, it was like, uh, like oh, it's, it, we go hard for our gas, like how much you save. Like, Listen, I save I'm it. going hard for my gas yeah. right now. Yeah, Can we? <laughs> yeah I, guess I got a hybrid, so I'm, I'm all right. You're good with I'm that. like medium hard. Are you yeah. the Tesla crew? <laughs> no, not Tesla, yeah. Okay. But just uh, half gas, half electric. Perfect. Yeah. Now it's like you know, the, the braking now technology you know. <laughs> or something. You, you recharges when you brake or something like that. What are you talking about? The, my, my hybrid truck. Yeah. Ford Maverick. Shout out to Ford. Sponsor us. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember that was like the funniest video ever. Yeah. It definitely was. Yeah. Did, have you seen Marcella since oh, then? I haven't seen her since <laughs> then. I've been wanting to have her on Talk Story, but she's busy. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, she's really busy. Oh, that would have been so funny. Well, you never know. Yeah. We have guest announcers on Talk Story, so okay. maybe she's one of them. Okay, cool, cool. So I'll stay tuned for that. Yeah. So um, it's funny because one of our sponsors for our, uh, our podcast is Texaco. And Texaco in Hawaii specifically, which is owned by them. Island Energy. Correct. They do they do a lot of work with the local uh, influencers yeah. and local events. And they're actually the only local gas station. Yeah, Did you know that? That's very yeah, true. a lot I of people do don't that. know that because mm-hmm. they see Aloha Gas, they see Hele, and they think they're local, but they're not. Yep. Yeah. So Texaco is actually the only local one. I love that, and it's led by beautiful yeah. Manoa Hine, who mm-hmm. I absolutely adore. So no, Texaco is a great sponsor. Yeah, yeah. So I love them, but I know a lot of people kind of misunderstand because they just see Texaco, they they think big oil, but yeah. you know. Hey, we gotta get paid, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> You're no, doing but, a great job of this <laughs> shout out right now. <laughs> um, I see right but, through you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I just think they, they do really good stuff with the, the community. They also sponsored some giveaways. So um, I know a couple of the winners are here um, from Ooh. our giveaway with Noms, Shaka T, Texco, Blue Note. I am a and big fan of these Noms, by the way. Yeah, yeah. They're so we, so we have good. some. Uh, I'll be giving away um, after our shishi break. Um, <laughs> Love it. But where, where's our winners, our giveaway winners? 
Can you raise your hand? Hi. Round hey, of applause right for there. the giveaway winners. Congrats. So I have all your stuff in the back. So after the podcast, you guys can come in. Oh, I thought that check was mine. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, said I thought that was mine, but okay. No, no. We have extra. We have extra though. Perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, those belts, man. Yeah. <laughs> I can eat a whole bag of this right you, now. You can eat it. You can literally eat it right now. We, <laughs> there's no rules here. That would be great for your sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know the, the owners of Nam and they're so good. It, I, I watched them blow up from like 2021. And they're everywhere now. Everywhere. It's so amazing to Including, see. Including, where's the camera? Texaco, Hawaii. <laughs> they are in Texaco. <laughs> yes, yes. Mahalo, mahalo nui <laughs> for all that you do for our Lahui, for this young Kanaka. Thanks for paying my rent. Mahalo nui, Texaco, Hawaii. <laughs> hey, I take 20%. I was going to say, I mean. I know Talk Story always needs sponsors too, right? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I take Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> At Makana Matuli. Yeah. Apple Pay. I'm going to actually start one for Talk Story. That's a you, good you idea. You might as well. Or Patreon. We got a couple of Patreon people in here too. Shout out to you guys. Oh. For our Patreon. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Right there. So, How's it? Wait, them. what is pa- Patreon is like OnlyFans? It's like a non-sexual <laughs> OnlyFans. No, that's a it's a subscription service. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's it started for like you YouTube gotta tell Auntie. Like, yeah, I'm a yeah, kid. creators. Yeah. So, so Auntie. So. Uh, <laughs> I will let you call me Auntie. Okay. <laughs> it's a sign of respect. I it wish is. more people called me Uncle. Okay. But it, yeah, it's just a subscription platform that people can support creators. Like a lot of podcasters have it. Right. YouTubers. Right. Maybe some influencers, but it's just you is can it get like perfect. the TikTok? <laughs> kind of like the TikTok. The TikTok. <laughs> I don't um, have. But a the TikTok. people who are on the TikTok can create a Patreon <laughs> for the TikTok it's followers. It's too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, it's easy. You can give them like behind the scenes look at things. You okay. can give them um, like special perks, like mm-hmm. they get a, the episode a day earlier, stuff like that. Okay. So you can create your own. I'll take your word yeah. for it. So. Um, Speaking of the, the giveaways, we also are going to do a live giveaway right now because I have a $50 it. gift card to give to somebody in the audience uh, from, from Texaco, right of over course. here. Of um, course. But Texaco. I'm going to, I I wish I could could do it by myself, but I actually need to call somebody uh, oh for some help. To give here away. we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will see. I just, uh, for some reason, I just need oh help God. giving away this, this gift card. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Kamaka, you're good. Hey, you can come out now. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, am okay. I going to cry yeah. or laugh? <laughs> you Does can come out. Does anybody know who this is? I, is this our first surprise guest? This is the first surprise And guest. it's not Josh Tatopi. It's not Josh Tatopi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We will see who it is. Uh-uh. is it I'm like excited. Kind of- this is, oh, okay. as soon as I knew you were the guest, I reached out to this person right away. Whew. All right. Introducing uh-uh. the one and only <laughs> <laughs> Marcelo <laughs> Oh my gosh, stop it! <laughs> oh my god, this is a man okay. Bucket list moments is you can, you can yeah, we saw we saw native up here. Yeah. You guys, ladies and gentlemen, the best interview of my life, Marcella <laughs> Resentes! Yeah! Wow. Welcome to the Blue Note. <laughs> Reun- this is the first time I've seen you, sis, since we was back in the day. 2018, seven years. Seven, seven years. years. Are you? Seven years. You impacted my life because of that. Look, I stay so fat. <laughs> <laughs> After I post a video of the gas, they turn to food. How come? <laughs> now look at me. Oh, my God. You're beautiful. <laughs> you so it's much. so good to see. Yes. If you this haven't seen so that much. video, go look it up, Marcelo. Oh, this is good, it. Kamaka. You're great. Yes. Are That's you still great. hot for your gas? <laughs> I heard you in the back. You thought I was on guy. How come? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you she thought it was okay. Josh That's Tatofi. That's my question. No, no. In full disclosure, Josh Tatofi texted me this morning. He's like, see you tonight. And I'm like, uh, I don't know if you're supposed to tell me that. Kamaka wasn't letting me know the secret. So I am. You're good way job. better than we Josh Tatofi. We did a good job <laughs> hiding it. Yeah. Sorry, Josh. Pua ki ele this. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> when I was in the back and she was by the door, like, Hmm, is this a guy in here or who is he? I was like, not. Nah. <laughs> That's it. We coming out. Well, How are you? 
what's thank up? you so much for coming and i i love the interview and i love you because you're so authentic so and authentic. that's the thing that i love the most i mean mckenna's a great host because she's authentically her you are authentically you and i just think being authentic is the greatest superpower that we could all have so you're great and i need help giving away this 50 dollars gift card because we know this. you love saving money on gas and Gas is hot, guys. Don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> you guys all know we go hard. No matter the job you get, no matter how much money you get, no matter if you're making money every day, tip every day, you can support your gas. It is hard. Yeah, yeah. We go hard for gas. Don't, <laughs> don't forget that. Yes. Oh, right, Kamaka, cool. this is the best surprise. I mean, I thought Valentine's Day was over, but yeah. wow, apparently Wait. not. I get one more question. Can you say my name right this time? <laughs> Seven years later. Yeah, you, you didn't say. You said you could. S For the record, I said it right, but it was spelt wrong. Yeah, yeah, I did right? notice Marcella that. Marcelo Resentes. Woo! <laughs> she got him, guys. She got him. Say your name. She say got your him. Name. She got him. No one is around you. Yes, sir. <laughs> So we got a $50 gift card from Texaco and then some air fresheners and this little uh, fanny pack. Or How what are we do you guys call that? this? What are you, money belt or? I don't uh, know. A man one. purse. Man purse, yeah. purse. <laughs> okay, so whoever can tell me the exact number that Marcella saved on gas. Oh, in that, that's that a night. good one. You just, uh, no, maybe raise your hand. You guys, can look it up if you need. Just look. I'm not going to tell you guys, but check this out. I'm pretty sure half of you guys is blind right now because I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> like, but check Welcome this out. To all of the check this out. You see this shirt right here? I get the numbers. Oh, you got your shirt. That was on fast glance. If you guys never see them, you guys is done. <laughs> I love time. that you have your own merch. <laughs> Do we have answers? <laughs> nope. No. Nah, no. Oh my. Oh. I guess I'd say not how much she saved, but how much she paid. Oh. No. I'm going to give you guys one more hint. The total was supposed to be $20, to be exact. <laughs> was supposed to be. So out of that 20 how much went fit in my tank? That's his question. <laughs> hmm? Nope. It was, it was $20, but mm, to be exact. Yeah. Oh, oh, super so close. close, super oh, close. close. I would say you guys no, are going to get there, this when you watch the video. Yeah, there, there's no sense. YouTube, YouTube, Marcella Resentes. <laughs> All right, we got it. It's $19. Yeah. Can we get them? Who said that? To be exact. To Who said that? 19 to be exact. Oh, okay. Blessings, Auntie. Blessings. First of all, how do I get a shirt like that? <laughs> you know what? I bought two shirts, but guess good. what? I forgot for bring them, so we're going to link up. Yeah, after. we'll link up again. You hey, got to do this again. I asked Marcella if she wanted anything to eat in the back. She said, no, you got to come to my house and I got to cook you some food. <laughs> I get good dinner at my house, but look, I never make enough for everybody. Just <laughs> let me know in advance, yeah, so I can make enough food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for doing that. And um, so what have you been up to since that video? Because you just recently joined social media in the last year or two. And when I saw you, I was so stoked. I think we both, I think I sent yeah, you a video, right? You did, you yeah, did. yeah. Right now, I'm trying to uh, take a break, stay away from the sweets, the food, because I cook enough, right? Look at me, I look like a pantry. <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. You know what I mean? I can still breathe, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. We can touch the toes. Hey. We can wipe the butt still, yeah. <laughs> as long as we can do all those things, we are right. You know what I mean? Yeah, God is but, good. But um, what I've been doing home, um, staying out of trouble, because, you know, life has a lot of trouble. It comes to you, yeah, mm. trouble. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, um, oh, girl, you, just, you're just, winning. Yeah. Just trying to help small businesses. If um, you guys know of anybody, need help, need one shout out, no cost. You're not going to find that today. I'm free. Yeah. How do we, <laughs> I'm free. How does that sponsor? God, God provides. I believe in God that. God does strong. provide. Mexico needs God to sponsor, provides. Marcella. God provides. I'm free. I do a lot of things. MC, whatever you guys need, DJ, I'm down. Graduations, I'm down. Hit the DM. Yes, follow Marcella. We, she we go needs hard. a Patreon Pod. and the yes. TikTok. Yes, guys. and the TikTok. I just did on wedding last night. You just what? I did on wedding last night. Oh, so nice. I had one big event, Kualo Ranch. You heard of that one? No. You guys never hear about that one. It's no. the Kiki Entrepreneurs. Oh. No, no. Anywho, it was a big event. I turned it down. I had to go to my brother's wedding, and guess what? What? I was only DJ for five minutes, and guess what? <laughs> and what? I'm glad I made it for that one hour, two hour, because guess what? What? 
was one beautiful wedding. It was oh, a blessing. Oh, congratulations. Yes, yeah, they've been Don't. together 20 plus years. So I suggest everybody in here, love, keep loving, be honest, and the truth will set you free at all times. Just Amen. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Do you see why she was the best interview? Like, so literally. genuine. Yes. Yeah, so and meetings. even the videos that you post, you're just trying out food. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a blessing time. to do that. Everybody, uh, mm. they just like see how big I can get, I think. <laughs> But, brother. Hey, I tell you, we got F45 members right over here. That's what's up. Okay, yeah. that's the next one. You and I at F45. You are oh right. My God. You are right. We're going to get that. I'm going to last like four minutes. That's okay. That's okay. I might not last that long. <laughs> brother, I want to say I appreciate you for reaching out to me. Thank you well, very much. Well. It's one blessing. I never see you in seven years. Oh, my God. Yes. Thank you. Hey, but we're not done yet. I have a quick game that I want to play with the both of you, okay? Um, and then um, somebody, uh, how do we validate the parking? Because Marcella kept asking me about oh, that. I, I don't want to forget about that. Yeah. The money is not the problem. That. I just don't want to be stuck here. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. from here. So if somebody can <laughs> help from Oh my like, gosh, you know what? We, literally, <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that. We validate, should just take your you know? camera crew and walk down with Marcella Resentes <laughs> down Kala Kawa. Let them know. That is some content right there. Yes, hey, Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> so... So right now, I want to do this game called Gas or Pass, presented by Texco in Hawaii. So these days, you know, the kids, they say if something's cool, if they, it's like lit, I think that's still a word. Um, they say that's gas, like it's cool. Mm. Oh, like it's a good thing, okay. that's gas. I didn't know that one. So and then pass if it's not good, if you don't so like lit. it. Okay, got it's it. It's kind of like lit, yeah. Lit. Okay. I think so. Calm down. Okay, so I'm going to ask, and I want the audience members to think of something that you want to ask that's gas or pass. <laughs> Okay, and I'll read some so you can kind of ke catch on and uh, think of a, a good one, okay? So we'll start off easy, uh, and anybody can answer first. Okay, gas or pass, lifted Yodas? Gas. Mm, pass, too expensive, the gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just trying to remember. <laughs> I actually was just thinking if I was from Hilo. <laughs> I was, I I was thinking. Well, when I heard the lower you stay to the ground, the cheaper your gas, guys, trust that. <laughs> I was high. I had a lifted for it. That was expensive. You're now I get on regular GMC Canyon. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the we the first time by. McKenna came on our podcast, you, uh, we go outside and we're walking across the street and she just rolls up in her Toyota Tacoma. Hey. <laughs> no, we cannot do that. It's against my religion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about this? We'll go to food. 7-Eleven Spam Musubi Gas or Pass? Don't do it. Come to my house. I make the best. <laughs> Look. Look, this is one thing honest about me. I love my race, and one thing I cannot handle is when my other half really like go out and get something for the first time in a long time, and soon as you get your plate, yeah, you're so hungry, you're like, oh my God. Oh, this is steaming, it's ready. You take the first bite, mushy rice. Oh, oh that's the worst. Oh, yeah. Not mushy rice. Excuse yeah. me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. I think you served this to the wrong table. <laughs> is there a new pot rice you guys just been making about? You know what? How long is it going to take? Can I come back there and make my own rice? They got to put signs. We serve mushy rice. Bring your own if you don't like ours. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm crying. I'm crying. No, I'm crying. No, I agree. I got rice tattooed on my arm. Oh my God. You can live with me. I cook you rice. I cook you rice every day. The best. Okay, well, I guess I'll skip this one. 7-Eleven spam. 7-Eleven sushi. We'll pass on that. Fanny packs. Gas or pass? Yeah. Let's get that. They're yeah. good. I love them. Okay. I have okay. a whole drawer of Okay, so you guys kind of catch on. So if you have something you want to ask. by the way, I want to say, like, literally, I, like, I call, everybody know my ties? Yeah? I call it fanny pack heaven. Because <laughs> literally everybody there, all the locals, and I Is feel like we guys? started the trend. The guys, for Is it sure. The shoulder kind? Uh, that's that's like, like, I think that's, like, a couple years old, mm. but I feel like... You know, we, we started that trend of the fanny packs. Yeah, I, I haven't really spent much time at Mai Tais, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you're GPK like right next to it, I've been a couple of times. <laughs> More of a pizza guy. <laughs> okay, uh, Crocs, gas or pass? Ooh. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Why? Because she's comfy. Yeah? Look, look. You like put them inside and then you like all the colorful stuffs on top. <laughs> oh my God, look, sis. I got the new one. That's me. Okay. Because we get plenty of nieces and nephews. They love that stuff. We're going to get that. Hard yeah. for the Crocs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hard for the Crocs. Yeah. You know what? I will. 
Texaco and Hawaii. <laughs> I do love what they did for Christmas. When their 12-day giveaway, they gave away oh, UH and Blitz. Pua and yeah. Spam Musubi for decorate. Yeah, 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 I, get yeah. One, I get one pair for you. Yeah, oh, I, I still got it at home, shop. but I don't have Crocs. But I am interested in the sports mode Crocs, though. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I just do the socks, to be honest, guys. <laughs> I don't mind the socks. It's comfortable. Keep the dirt off. That's true. Okay, people that cut you off and don't trump the shaka. Ooh. You go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon I got to stand up on those ones. I, uh, look, look, look. We do learn. You can answer for the both of us, because I, yes. I know we're going to share the same sentiment. Yes. We do try to be polite. Yeah, we born raised from here. We know not everybody get the same Allah spirit as us, but... Me, I like to take my time. We get traffic behind. Come on, Uncle. Let's go. Eddie, stay back there. Meet me. <laughs> now, look. You don't want me to put it in park and come out because huh, it's Good not going to be pretty. But, look, you should always, like, spread this word. When somebody, it's the littlest thing. I can give you a napkin, one smile, one high. Give them back. It's not going to hurt you. It doesn't cost you a dime. You may change my life, you know what I mean? You don't know what I'm going through. So just be very loving. I mean, this world is horrible today. We got to show a little more love. Try to help save lives so we don't lose too much. That's what I taught for this year. I thought about that. I did. Because we lose so much people. You, know? you are amazing. I agree. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't, she speaks the truth. Like, it doesn't, I mean, I live up in... I shouldn't probably say that, but where he no. lived. <laughs> 1951, Khalid <laughs> Drive. <laughs> I mean, but it, it is, and it changes your day. You know, it changes. When, when someone waits and you, you make that eye contact and you respect that space and just saying, hey, no, you know what? You go first, especially Kupuna. When you see Kupuna driving yes. and you're like, you give hope someone. Them, hope them. Yep. Or when you see them crossing the street, help them get across. You know, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. When my gram first came up, I got a couple of DMs saying, your videos changed my life. Today was horrible. I never like be here. And it changes your life because when you come from suicidal and you change your life around, many good things, you see the Lord bless you abundantly. So, you know, just reach out. You never know what the next person may be going through. Or when you're road raging, you don't know what that person going through. So be cautious because if they on 1,000 and you on 500, be careful, yeah. you know, especially in the different city. You know, why not? I'm sorry. I apologize for the ignorance. I'm going to talk to them. On the 23rd, <laughs> on the 23rd of this month, I promise you guys, when I high school, I'm there. I've been doing something new. Um, I've been sign waving domestic violence, drug abuse, all these things. Thank you. I got into a That's new important. world besides eating. Yes. Awesome. yes, yes. It's very so important. So be aware. You know, it's really good to reach out to the public. Awesome. Yeah. Mahalo. Mahalo. Okay. Um, Hawaiian food at grad parties. Ooh. Gas or pass? Pass. Why? I, I um... I'm not all about the Hawaiian food, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm local, but we won't we won't clip that because with social media these days, you might get canceled. It, it's okay, guys. Look, we don't look. I'm different. I'm not like everybody. I rather do chicken. Mm. <laughs> chicken. You see one ketchup? What bring kind it to me. Chicken. Fresh, any kind. Kage. Yeah, any kind. Any kind, I'm down. Oh my god, I'm crying. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Makeda? She like them all. I don't even know the yeah. question the anymore. Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian food, food Hawaiian party. food. Oh, are you kidding me? I, yeah. I could. So I have this new rule since I started working at nine to five, which is not true because it's a 24-hour job. But like, I will not know. I can no longer take Hawaiian food lunch meetings because I just want to sleep. Kanak, Kanak, <laughs> yeah. straight Kanak. Yeah. So I am, but I am a Hawaiian food. That is my favorite all time. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for the truth. She wants to sleep. Stop. <laughs> she like eat that right now. I do. I do need sleep these days. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more. And if anybody has one that you want to ask, they'll just raise your hand and I'll come to you. Okay, uh, Waikiki, gas or pass? I mean. I got I, I have sponsors in Waikiki. <laughs> <laughs> you can plead the fifth. Very important. <laughs> Not me. I stick to Y9. Thank you. I I would say, um, and this is what I this is what I learned from Guy Hagi when he was on the podcast, bringing up Guy Hagi again. He said that locals need to do more touristy things. And it was a good perspective because we're always so drawn away from all the touristy things like snorkeling and like hikes or whatever, just because, you know, it's, that's what the tourists do. 
But it, I think earlier or last year we went on this catamaran thing and we went snorkeling. I'm like, this is so amazing. Why don't I snorkel more? It's so cool. But I just don't do it because it's like that's a touristy thing, you know. Yeah. No, I totally get it. Yeah. I think that we do need to experience more. Um, I mean, super guilty, I think, as many of us in this room are. We live in the most beautiful place in the world. Like, we are so blessed to live here. And I think sometimes of just, like, being so in my computer at work and so into this, but just to take a walk on the beach and to just be able to appreciate. But here in Waikiki, you know, what's happening right now with the new contract with tourism, we are going to invite Malihini and Kama'aina alike to experience the same things. And But there are so many more stories of Waikiki that, that people don't know about. Like there's Kalihua Vehe that no one talks about in Waikiki. These love breaks and like all those things. And I look forward to the day where we get to change that narrative and tell the people, you know, the, when they come here, what those stories are. Mm -hmm. And that was brought to you by the Hawaii Tourism Authority. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, here's my shout out, and the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. God bless your heart. <laughs> but guess what? Mahalo nuloy, kahio luis. I'm and trying to get what? on the podcast. So that was a good question because, you know, on my way here, I told my other half, how do you feel being out here far from home? Because we don't leave, we don't go far, right? And she said, I feel unsafe. I said, me too. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm not scared of nothing but the man above. But when I came out here and we got to use the GPS, <laughs> I am scared it's where tough. this thing the one is going to take too. me. It's, I'm it's like, rough. oh, my God, the blue note. Honey, check the thing. Where we stay? <laughs> Did we pass it? Oh, babe, we just didn't pass it. I said, oh, my God. We got to go around the block. Where can I turn? I was going to ask the officer. Excuse me, sir. Where do I turn? But I think really, really, it's coming out of our comfort zone. It's not really for me doing tourist things. I don't look at it like that. Whether you tourist, you're not from here. Ah, you guys all locals. I'm going to give you that chance. You know what I mean? Until you guys come here and BP loud, and I'm going to treat you different. You know what I mean? <laughs> But that's honestly speaking, but I, I don't feel like I'm afraid to do tourist things because I do. Guys, look, I jump inside my truck. When I say I'm going around the island, I go around the island. <laughs> I go the same way every time. I go H3 all the way around. I make the pit stops for the bathroom, right? And then I feed the birds bird crumbs, certain areas we go. And then I keep going, and then I come down Kunia, and then I'm like, Honey, should we eat out or at home? Oh, I know, like, cook, we had a long day. And then we go back home, we get food, and we went around the island. I was on tourist for the day. I got to and make, she supported. Hey, I got to make sure our island was still safe, you know what I mean? I checked the scene, told the loved ones hi, right? And then I made them home safe. Thank you, Jesus. I love that. Okay, so good. We, we got uh, maybe a couple more. Does anybody have one that they want to ask? Any gas or pass? If not, I'm going to continue on. Oh, I see oh, some okay, hands. Okay, I see. I think that's my... Dad. Uh, let's see if I can come down here. I know what it's like to work with your dad. I'm just going to jump down here. Uh oh. Excuse me, excuse me. Hey, aloha. Ooh. Okay. It's so good to see you. Okay, gas or pass. Nakaleka. Ola la Hawaii. Manahali kuai liki me ma KGS. Kyoka General Store. What language is he speaking? Gas. Was that? Oh, did I understand? No, that yeah, yeah. Oh. He said the the Hawaiian language cards at stores like KGS. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my fave. Yeah, I am looking forward to Merry Monarch Week in just about five weeks, and I will be uh, I will be there every day. I am in Hilo. Mm. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shout out to Bree Kobayashi. I love Bree and yes. Megan. <laughs> yeah. That's my dad. Thank you. The stuff. Mahalo nui. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> While I'm here. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Come on. Jamie, here you go. Your mic's yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what's your favorite gas station? But I don't think that's... Well, you have to say it, yeah. the gas station, and you have to say gas or pass. Hele gas. Smash. Or <laughs> gas. <laughs> We got a millennial here. She doesn't know how to play this game. I want what she's it's drinking. It's a different game. <laughs> Can I have two? Six. <laughs> You is on fire. <laughs> gas or pass? Hella gas station. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. Hey, great for entertainment. Yay. Okay, we got one. This is fun. Gas or pass? Kona brewing beer. Gas. That's for her. Um, I'm alcoholic free, guys. Recovery. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Amen. Good question, Aaron. 
<laughs> okay. Can okay. I actually have a quote right now, though? <laughs> well, it's kind of like not a gas or pass, but is it shave ice or ice shave? Depends where you're from. I'm going to go with, I mean... That's a hard because I think it's from it's an it's a Moku thing or it's an island thing, right? It's I'm like where you're from. Thing. So I grew up saying shave ice, but I super respect ice shave. If you don't know it on the big I island, agree. we say ice shave. A uh, Hilo specifically. Hilo yeah. especially. I'm I, I think I wonder if it's because of like a Japanese thing, maybe they translated it backwards, so they said ice shave before instead of shave ice. A good thing Hawaii. to or research. Hawaiian Kamaka thing. Diaz. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> or maybe Hawaiian, yeah. I'm not sure. Anybody? Okay, here we got. Let me squeeze in over here. Thank you. Okay. Jason Momoa. Gas. Gas, right? Together. <laughs> Pass. What? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to Why get Why don't we do that together? Can you ask again? Okay. Jason Momoa. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you, but Look, 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 look. He went sexy, brattle, but let's not get carried away, ladies. God, I said that so quick, too, yeah? And but I've known Jason for my whole life, so, like, I... Ch and yeah. so that's why I said it that way, Jason. Please yeah. believe me. Okay, I'm straight, and I would say gas. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to Come get him on the podcast. I'm trying to get him on the podcast. <laughs> this... It's okay. That is a Patreon. Anyone? Last one, maybe? Okay. Oh. Oh, we got a good one here. Gas or pass, late night walks on Waikiki Beach. <laughs> Why not beach? Let's get it, let's go. What strong <laughs> shoulders this man has. <laughs> Beautiful hair, too. Uh, yes, for sure. <laughs> Except, did you guys know <laughs> that the city and county of Honolulu, you cannot be on Waikiki Beach after 10 p.m.? <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Not that I know that I was given any criminal citations or not, but... <laughs> no, but you will be cited. <laughs> you will be cited. Oh, that's a whole other show. <laughs> that's uh, Keep It Aloha After Dark. Correct. <laughs> Featuring Rick Blangiardi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me finish up these ones and then we'll take a quick shishi break. Are you guys having fun? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, so I would fun. only do this if Kamaka asked and this surprise is so worth it. <laughs> okay, pineapple on pizza. Gas or pass? Pineapples. Pass. You guys, like for the record, and if back. you guys are watching, Hawaiians do not like, I buy, and I don't know if I'm speaking out of term for Hawaiians, but we do not like, do you like pineapple on your pizza? I like pineapple and I like pizza separately. Correct. <laughs> nah, I get that because <laughs> the munchies are sweet and the salty. Mm, that's me. <laughs> we gotta Correct. keep the kele keles. Let me know if anybody <laughs> likes We can make one appointment. We can do transfers. <laughs> okay. Oh Costco samples. Gas I'm just or pass. thinking about how much I'm going to get hated on for the pass of Jason Momoa. <laughs> no, don't worry. We'll, we'll All clip the women that. are like, are you crazy? Oh, why you got her on? We, won't, no. we won't clip that. We won't clip Thank that. Thank you. Jordan. I do not approve that clip. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Costco samples. Gas or pass? Pass. Why? Oh. I love Free, free so, samples. No, not those. <laughs> I can give out better samples. Come my house. <laughs> All right. Look, look. Marcella catch House these, Catch samples. these numbers real quick. <laughs> let's get it. Let's go. Don't put that in the uh, episode. <laughs> Marcella's my new sponsor for Talk Story. <laughs> she making a lot of food. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Eating a poke bowl with a fork, not chopsticks. Gas or pass? That's wrong. That's so wrong. <laughs> That's against our religion. Mamba, you stab the throat, you get too excited, the fish come alive. <laughs> Use the chopsticks so they don't come back alive. Eat them nicely. <laughs> All right. Show you sugar, ginger, garlic, chili pepper, water. Gas Ooh. or pass? That's me. Wait, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Gas. gas, gas oh, yeah. gas. Yeah, all the way. Okay. Wait, is Kai Ken a Scanlon here? <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that guy kind of won't come from the big island for this. What? <laughs> that was a great interview. Those are great though. lyrics in that really song, cool. though. It's really very poetic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's all for Gas and Pass presented by Text One Hawaii. Mahalo to yeah. Text One Mahalo, everybody, for participating. Mahalo, mahalo. Texaco. So, thank you, Texaco. Yes, Marcella, so. before we take a, a shishi break, I just want to 
Mahalo you for coming out all over here to town. I appreciate it. Thank you. Reuniting what with McKenna. Blessing. It's yes. been so fun. I appreciate you guys. Any, any guys. final words? Any final words? Um, stay positive. Stay strong. Love one another. Keep the love. God first. And all glory to everybody. Bless Thank you. you. And somebody please validate her parking. We don't like be stuck. Yeah. Mahalo. Yeah. You, you, you want food or anything? You're cruising? Oh, she made dinner at home, guys. Okay. She's passing. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to text you. Right. I love you, too. I love you, too. One more hug. Yeah. One more hug. Hey, you guys, we're, yay. Okay. We're, we're going we're gonna to come um, see okay. you in the back real quick. Best interview of my break. life right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> is there a surprise for me? <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to keep that one for top story. <laughs> okay. No secrets here. That was way better than I could ever imagine. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Komaka. <laughs> Good job, you. You are. That was really, I was very surprised. Yes. When you said Josh to Tolfi, I, I told John. Did to you tell him. Josh to text me? No. I don't know how that happened. Weird. I didn't yeah. respond to Josh, so I won't feel Yeah, well, he didn't show up, so good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text him now. Yeah. How was that? How was that that whole experience? Very cool. And, you know, this is a really great story of, like, even how I got to be on this couch right now talking to Komaka Diaz because I was in the heart of Hollywood interviewing the biggest, you know, celebrities in the world, and it was so empty to me, and it was so, it, it wasn't, I had gotten to my dream job, I had gotten to everything I had wanted to be as a little girl, and she is what my heart called home to talk to, for her to be heard, the things that she just said right there. And she is the perfect example of why I do what I do. Oh, I love that. And that, so that's a perfect time for us to take a quick shishi break. And while we're doing that, we have another special guest to keep you entertained while we... Uh, Shishi. Back, shishi. So the thing about the podcast is um, we always drink shaka tea on the podcast and about hour in, I always have to shishi. So it's not like a, I, like a stage shishi break. It's like I actually have to shishi. This break. is Kamako yeah. where he just tells you all his secrets. Yeah, I, just, I, 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 I tell you my whole I life. know too much yeah. about your toes and your yeah. bladder. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Well, that's just who I am. That's authentically me. You are authentically you. All um, right. So... I think maybe we'll we'll call our new guest on and she can come set up while we go take a shishi break. So Kelana, you wanna come on stage? Where are <gasps> Kelana? you? Kelana! Yeah. I don't even know where she is. Maybe she's in the back. She's yeah. in the back. And if you guys don't know, she is the Naohoku Hano Hano Award winner multiple. She's also the most promising artist of the year, I believe. Where's my mom? Two or three years ago? Two or three years ago, young, beautiful talent um, from the island, and she has now, there she is. I'm so proud of this young woman. She's now ventured um, to New York City, where she shares half of her time, and so proud of her. So, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Kilan. Am I taking your job, Komako? Uh, it's funny. While you, were doing, while you were doing that, I was like, thank God she's doing this, because I didn't prepare anything for Kilan. <laughs> Please okay. give it up one more time. Oh, come on. Right, sorry. We'll, I'm yeah, going. We'll come. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. Where, where do you want to sit? Oh, you want to stand? How, how do you want to do it? It's, it's up to you. We'll, we'll set up. So, okay, uh, we'll get you a mic. So, the reason I wanted Kilana to come here, because she's actually the first musician. Oh, do you need a mic? A stand? You do, yeah. She's the first musician that I saw here at the Blue Note. Uh, two years ago, maybe, right after the, the Vita Mia. I came with a couple friends, and then, yeah, it was a great show. I think I sat right over there on that table. And she's just one of my favorite singers here from Hawaii. So Aww. talented. One of my favorite voices ever. Mahalo. She, Thank if you, you haven't heard her, you're in for a treat. <laughs> she came all the way from New York for this. She, just she, for this. Just she for can, this. She can tell her story. I'm going to take a quick shishi break, then got I'm going to come yeah, out Yeah, I got and, them. I got uh, you guys. Enjoy. Yeah, we're good? We're good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, aloha, everybody. How are you guys feeling tonight? You feeling good? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, if you haven't heard of me before, aloha, my name is Kelana. Um, I am actually born and raised from the West Side as well. Um, debatable, because I'm in Kapolei, so of course the true West Siders, they're like, nah, you guys are closer to Central, but I, I say West Side, so. But um, born and raised, and, uh, and then I got into Kamehameha. Um, in ninth grade, so I graduated from Kamehameha in 2012. 
And uh, I grew up really loving music. My papa was a big music fanatic. He had a, a set of bongos and congos, and he could play the piano. And uh, he had vinyl records at the house. And uh, I remember hearing it throughout the house. It was always jazz or bossa nova, um, but also Hawaiian. So he had some Hawaiian records that he would play. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away when I was about eight years old. And um, when he passed away, my family and I, we were in charge of cleaning up everything. And I was lucky enough to stumble upon the records and the record player. And um, a song that I actually heard, and it's stuck in my brain, I know it, word for word, it goes like this. It was a jazz standard. It goes, uh, look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree And I feel like I'm clinging to a cloud I can't understand I get misty just holding your hand Yeah I remember that one. <laughs> and so I grew up, and uh, I picked up the guitar at 15, and uh, my mom would, uh, she would convince me, okay, if we go the YouTube, it's a big thing. If we put you on the YouTube, then who knows what will happen? So we would record these very cringy, now that I think about it, but thank you, Mom, for seeing the vision through before even I could. There's some really ancient videos of me 10, 12 years ago in my bathroom at 15 uh, playing some songs, and uh, they kind of spread like wildfire at Kamehameha, so everyone started calling me the bathroom singing girl. <laughs> we would change out the bathroom curtains every single, every single set. It was like a set every single time. So, uh, but because of that, I ended up going to the University of Hawaii at Manoa, studied music, studied voice. And um, I always wondered what it would have been like if I had gone away for school, maybe to Juilliard, maybe I would have been Papa Proud and you know, he could have said he had a kid that went to Berkeley or Juilliard, but I stayed home. And um, I told myself, you know, maybe there will be a day where I will get to take my music elsewhere, uh, but for now I'm gonna stay home and I'm gonna do what I can and I'm gonna pave a way for R&B music and jazz because grandpa was jazz and Hawaiian, mom and dad were R&B. And uh, I was lucky enough, very blessed from a bunch of different places and people here who really supported me and said, keep going, keep going. And uh, yeah, 10 years later, I won my very first hoku in 2021 <laughs> as a most promising artist and best R&B album. And so the following two years, I thought, what can I do to top that? That was really such an incredible experience. My first ever project, you know, most promising artist. How do I keep the promise going, you know? Um, and I've always been someone that put my heart and soul into everything, and I thought, what can I do to not only make my papa proud, make my ohana proud, but what can I do for Hawaii that I feel, you know, I, I've learned from the generation above me, um, and one of those really big artists was Justin Young, uh, Kimi A Minor, Anuhea, a lot of them kind of did that, going away from home for a bit, and coming back and sharing and providing resources that we probably didn't have, and so I prayed on it, and um, a year ago, I even went on Kamaka's podcast a year ago, and I said, uh, I don't think I'm going to be here in a year. I am going to, I feel like I'm meant for more. I'm, I'm meant to do something and bring back. And so just like McKenna and just like Kamaka, I decided to go away. And so I moved in September of 2023. I've been up in New York living in Brooklyn for uh, the last four months. Whew, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And while I've been up there, I've been so blessed to meet incredible people too, just by being authentic and showing aloha. Um, I actually have a really great friend of mine named Jermaine Fletcher from New York who has really opened so many doors for me. So can we all please make a round of applause and welcome him here. So glad you're here. But while I'm up there, I share this song. And this is the very first song I ever wrote um, where I didn't believe the lyrics at first but I call this like my manifestation song. And I promised myself that I would sing this until I believed the words. And so uh, here's a little bit about me. And while I've been gone, I've been sharing the importance of Oli, 
before sharing. And so you might know this one, but I, uh, I put it into this song of mine. This is I Am. This is my song, it's beautiful. This is my song, sing. This is my song, sing. This is our song, sing. And this is our song, sing. Sing, oh. Hey. That was beautiful, mahalo. <laughs> so I'm happy to report, since writing that song in 2018, I have sang it sang it and sang it and now I believe the words and it's been amazing because in the last year alone I was able to take this song to Washington DC um, to represent Native Hawaiians I met the president and I got to sing this in front of them and um, I got to go to New York and sing this song and uh, in the last month alone I got to go to Europe and I got to sing this song in Amsterdam and in Paris so I am on a mission. <laughs> oh, close your eyes. Come with me to a place you soon will see. My mind is my sacred place to define the way I see the way the world sees me. And I hope you'll sing along. You'll sing along. Sing along. Mahalo. Thank you. Do you mind if I share one more song with you? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I wrote this next song, and uh, I'm going to have the track Searching playing with it. And I released it in July of 2023 last year. And so this is a really cool story because I had no idea how I was going to get to New York. But just like McKenna, I kid you not, I heard something tell me I have to go. So different, I felt I need to go. And I was in between LA and New York. And I kept going back and forth to both places for a good year. And when I went to New York in March of last year, I saw this thing right as I got off the plane, there was this bag that said, 
New York or nowhere. And I was like, okay, I guess that's the sign then at the New York. So, um, so I thought about it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to just start telling everyone I'm going to move to New York. No idea or plans yet. And then in the span of a couple of months, things just started lining up. I got to go to DC. I met a friend there who told me about a place and a person she knew, and that person needed another friend to stay in that place, and then that's how I ended up in Brooklyn. And so it's been amazing. But in that transition period, when things started to shift, I was so terrified. And I thought, am I going to be able to still be true to myself here in Hawaii? It was so hard to leave home. I've never moved away from home before. Um, was I able to still be me while I'm out there? Um, and am I, am I able to have both? Am I able to have that love and that aloha? Will I find it elsewhere? And uh, yeah, and I, I told myself, yes, if I keep believing in it and if I keep searching, I will find it. And uh, this is a song I wrote. It's called Searching. Tell me it's not to 
It's been a beautiful ride, and I'm so grateful. So, mahalo nui to you too for letting me share. Mahalo. <laughs> uh oh, Kelana, ladies and gentlemen, and I love that you guys. You, she's making Hawaii so proud. Come on, my grad over here. Mahalo, you can sister. Have a seat. You can have a seat. We're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna hear to that. It. I'm gonna speak it into existence. That is gonna be a national radio. Aww. Thank we're you. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah. We're gonna do that. Yes, sister. It's so nice having McKenna here. She can just like, uh, fill in while I'm doing stuff. I just... <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. Wait till you get my invoice. <laughs> <laughs> She's expensive. We're donating the proceeds to Maui, so and I could pay you I, or I could help out the people that just we went will through tragedy. We will continue to help the people of Maui, okay, always, right, right. first. Not yes. to give you an ultimatum or anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi, that, sister. That was amazing. Are we sharing yeah, microphones? Like, no, no, oh, she, she got it. Right. Okay, yeah. perfect. You want me to hold Now that? we got three native Hawaiians of like, uh, the <laughs> How cool Ooh. is that? You guys are talking about all the Ho'ailonas. I had my Ho'ailona, the sign that I knew I had to have all women, strong females tonight. Oh. It was this Smart one, man. This okay. one person said, like, who run the world, all and right. it said girls. <laughs> Good And answer. that was my Ho'ailona. I was like, okay, I got to have all women. Yeah. <laughs> You're great. Whoever that was. I'm so happy to be here. How does it feel to be home? It feels really great. I experienced a New York winter. Well, actually, I heard it's a, it was a mild winter, but a this winter, nonetheless. Um, there was no sun for two weeks, and boy, was I a wreck. I did not realize how much I loved the sun. So on the very first day, the sun peaked. Uh, it was two weeks ago, or a week ago, and I remember waking up. I'm like, oh, no way. Is the sun out today? So I went in front of the window, and I just like, stare there for like a good minute and I like shed a tear like it's <laughs> that dramatic you miss the sun it's crazy I didn't know you just start doing your protocol yeah yes <laughs> yes I'm like thank you <laughs> oh, but uh, it's been it's been great to be back <laughs> <laughs> oh well it's, it's so great to I'm have glad the you both caught of you. that I got you I got you my my Hawaiian immersion upbringing would be mad at me if I couldn't um I also have another giveaway that I want to do real quick before we Wait, talk to Wait, did it come more. out? It did come out. I have, I have some for, I have, well, I have your own in the <laughs> back. Thank you. Thank it has you. a sticky note that says McKenna. You, this is so good. Yeah. So this is called Mo Gabs, my other business Hawaii verse. We created it in December. It's like a local version of Mad Gabs where you read the gibberish. Like it says, cone, hawk, off, he. So you have to keep guessing what that is. Cone, hawk, cone of off, he. Cone, of coffee. Yeah. So there's about 200 cards in here and then you just read it and the other people got to guess. So oh, that's awesome. we won't it's play it right fun. now, but I do want to give it away. We have a couple and maybe I'll, um, if you come and I'm so happy buy merch. You came in. When did it, when did it happen? December. Okay. Yeah. So I, I already saved one for you because you said that. We, what about me? I did I get one? one? I know. You got one as you well. It's in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just know I that I was going to donate you know, the rest of these mo caps to starving children in Africa. So either I could do that or you can take it. Wow. Guilt trip. It's up to you. Because they obviously need mocaps. I've been there. I've been in Africa. Kamaka for the people. <laughs> yes. So think about it while we, we talk stories. Got it. Okay. Uh, so I want to give this to somebody. Uh, and I don't, I don't have like a, a giveaway a game. Do you guys have something? Like a, a trivia? Sing a Kailana song. <laughs> <laughs> Name my favorite Kailana song. <laughs> so uh, hmm. what, what should I do? It's I need, your show, I need some help. I need some help. I think I, I don't think I was going to do this. It wasn't in my show notes. It's just something I thought of. Okay, let me help here, you here. here you go. Okay, okay go all on. right. Um, this is live action. All right, until you figure out it's supposed to be... Okay, who can get this first? You're going to win the prize. Logo Molego. Who said it first? Uh, I don't, uh, is that's that, tough. <laughs> I don't know. That's tough. Tosh? Tosh, if you it, win. You win one of the first Mo Gabs. Yeah, Sega, if it's my family, they can get their own. Who, who is it? <laughs> oh, excuse me. If you bought, the, if you made them buy tickets tonight, you better go give this to your cousin. <laughs> Wait, who, who, who won it? I think Auntie over there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Is it Auntie Sharon? <laughs> I can get you another one. 
<laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, okay, we'll give it to somebody else. All right, let me check this <laughs> We'll try again. We'll try again. All right, so now I'm... I love you, though. <laughs> now I'm your marketing director. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Molt Gabs by... Okay, who is Molt Gabs by? By who? It's his podcast. It's who represents all the small local companies. I heard Hawaii, Hawaii verse over there. Oh, yay. yay. <laughs> winner. 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 Do it. It's, I saw that. No, I didn't. Is that, is, I don't care Come on. I know what's up. Is that <laughs> Jamie? Good oh, job, oh, Jamie. Round of applause for Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. And just make Good sure you job. tell the other Jamie it's not smash or pass. It's <laughs> mocaps, all right? It's a different game, all right? <laughs> yeah. We're all, different game. <laughs> Thank you for the help. I need You're very that. welcome. All like right. 20%. <laughs> yes. We got you. Yeah. You're written into the will. <laughs> So, Kilana, I know yes. you already shared about your story, but um, I missed the beginning because I was with Marcella, and okay. Marcella was amazing. Gotcha. Oh, my gosh. They're oh, way yeah. better than I I know. We took it. pictures. We were all out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, did you already answer where you're from, where you grad? was it like growing up? Did you share with us? Um, where I'm from, from Kapolei. Yeah. Um, where I'm from, where I'm at. Oh, where you grad? Oh, where I grad, Kamehameha. And Kapolei. I mean, oh, I didn't graduate Kapolei, but I claim <laughs> Kapolei a little bit. But Kamehameha, <laughs> yes. Okay. And last one? And how, how did you get into music? Um, yeah, I, I think I did show that. Yeah, my grandpa, my mom, and then I kept going, I kept going, and then I actually thought I was gonna be um, a music teacher back at Kamehameha. That was like the end goal. That was a big goal. And then I just kept discovering different things, avenues of music, and I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of fun. I'm gonna try that. Oh, I can sing in the restaurants, in the hotels, and then found out, oh, I can write songs for commercials and TV and movies, and then I started doing that, and then, um, yeah, it just kept snowballing. Do you want to sh uh, share this story when you went super viral because you sang at somebody's <laughs> wedding? And then That's a good story. Uh, yeah, okay. That's a so, cool story. So, yeah, 2020, 2020 was crazy, um, but what was beautiful about that was it really made me hone in on who I was and if I really did love music for music, and, and that's what I realized is... I love it, it's my passion, I feel like it's a part of my calling and my purpose. And um, so even though I didn't have work, I did live streaming on, um, yeah, on all the things. All the things. All the platform. The, and I created TikTok? a little, yeah, TikTok, and I created a little hui all over the world, like especially here at home, but also all over. And, um, and then, so that was what encouraged me to write my own music because everyone's like, you know, share your music. So I released the album got nominated for Hoku. And then when things finally started opening up again, I, it was actually funny. So I played this wedding because Fia asked me, hey, can you cover this wedding? I, I have to go on a plane, I can't do it. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I show up to this wedding that Fia asks me to cover for him. And then um, when I get there, the wedding coordinator is like, oh, who are you? I was like, oh, I have to cover Fia. And they're like, oh, no, no, we don't have time for that. And I was like, uh, he told me, and they're like, yeah, no, sorry, we, we're like so behind schedule, so you can maybe do like one song if you want. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I did one song, and it was Best Part by her and Daniel Caesar, if you know that song. And there was somebody at that wedding that took a video and then sent it to this girl. Her name is Leanne V. She's a big um, personality on social media, and uh, her husband is Don Benjamin, and he's like, beautiful model guy, and um, she's beautiful too. Uh, but they were getting married in Hawaii, so they wanted, they specifically requested for me to sing at their wedding. And I did not know that they had millions and millions of followers on the TikTok. And, TikTok. Um, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> on the TikTok. I think that's my Filipino. <laughs> and so I play at this wedding, and something tells me, oh, you know, let's make a little fancy touch for them. So I go to Target, I run to Target real quick, and get one of those letter boards, and I put, congrats, Leanne V and Don Benjamin, love Kehlana music. So I put it right by me, and then I'm playing, and then people are just vibing to it. I had no idea that people out there um, really aren't used to seeing like a girl playing the guitar and doing the all like looping stuff. That's like really popular here. But they all came from out of state and they were like, whoa, they're like fascinated, they're taking videos. And then there's this really popular R&B artist, his name is Tank, and uh, if you don't know who he is, he's Tank is huge, <laughs> Tank is huge. So I'm like, oh my gosh, most promising artist, R&B album, I'm like, oh perfect, Tank. It's aligned, so he comes up to me and he's like, Wow, and I'm like, do you want to sing a song? And then everyone is like, oh my gosh, yeah, Tank. So there's a video viral on TikTok of everyone 
crowding around us because he's about to sing, and he, um, and he starts singing with me, and I'm singing with Tank, and it's crazy. We finish that song together, and then uh, everyone's like, S do a Tank song, do a Tank song. And off the top of my head, I'm like, mm, I don't know how to play a Tank song. So literally, I kid you not, I'm like, oh. So they're all like fangirling. I whip out my phone, and I open Spotify, and I'm like, listen real quick. And I'm like, no. OK, OK, I promise you. What? And so then I, I'm like, OK, let's do this song. And he's like, what? You know that one? I'm like, mm-hmm. It's my favorite song. Mm -hmm, I do. And then we sing that song, and it's a song called Can't Let It Show. So, uh, <laughs> but that went viral. And so after that wedding, people all over the country wanted me to mimic that exact thing. And so the funny thing about that wedding was we had to wear beige. And I had my, so I would go country, like around every state, LA, went to Miami, Atlanta, I had to wear beige and do the whole thing for everybody. But that's kind of what expanded me to uh, the states and led to where I'm at now. It just, <laughs> just takes one opportunity, just one door opening, yeah. I love that, that's super cool. Thanks. I know you both are really busy people and always got stuff going on. You put a lot of energy in what you do. Um, and I, I get that, because I'm always on the move, always doing stuff. So I, w I want you to share something that you do when you're feeling overwhelmed, and you just have a million things to do. Like, how do you kind of center yourself? Because earlier today, I started to feel a little overwhelmed when I was at my, my house. I was like, wow, I didn't realize there's so many moving parts here, and I don't... And I told everybody I don't need help. <laughs> so I'm like, welcome uh, <laughs> to yeah, that's the television slash yeah. podcast. <laughs> so I was texting Jordan and Ozzy and like, uh, kind of freaking out. I think I do need help. Can you guys come earlier? Call back my parents. Like, uh, actually, can you guys come earlier? I actually do need help. And then I get here and I do everything by myself. But they but still it's come. It's a part of the game. It's a part support. of the game, right? Keilana and I can tell you that doing everything by yourself, because I think you came to a talk story yeah. filming, right? And yes. you, yeah. You have to. You have to be you have to be so passionate about your art and how creative you are that you you need to know every position in what you do. Like if you don't, then you're you know, you're lacking and you should learn. And I encourage a lot of people, this next generation and and I probably won't get a lot of wows for this, but this next generation, I, I strongly feel, are either empowered or entitled. And it takes a lot of work, a hard work, passion, and just to know what everything that you've experienced today, I'm happy for you that you know that, because you know what it's like to put on, come on, look around you right now. You have a successful mm -hmm. first live podcast Thank show. You. I and appreciate you, all and of you. And you did that. And I want to shout out your team, too. But you, you this is cool, bro. Yeah, Jordan, Oz. Yeah, Rio, Jordan. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. I can pay you or, <laughs> noms. or I could donate it to the people of Alati 9 in Bukaru so that they could paint their walls and redo the world map that we did. Where's my checkbook? Ago. So it's up to you guys. We'll talk after. Just think about it. But yeah, I think piggybacking off of McKenna, I think it's important to really be passionate about what you, you're doing and like really put, put some time into it, put some grit, put your back into it. You, you gotta know the ins and outs of everything if you wanna be good at what you do. But I think the beautiful thing after that is um, delegation and um, having the trust, um, you know, trusting others to, to help your vision see through because you can do a lot by yourself, that's true but you can do so much more when uh, you have people behind you. And it takes a village to raise a kid. Um, you know, our passions are like our, ki our children, you know? So yeah. um, I really need to shout out my village, Char, mm -hmm. Jermaine. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's so beautiful. I have a village here at home in Hawaii that is connected to me to a village in, in New York. And, um, and it's just so beautiful. So I love you guys. I'm so grateful. And that, that's what I would say is when I'm stressed out, I know I have a hotline for who I call when I'm going through boy stuff, who I call when I am going mm -hmm. through stressful career things. You know, like it's good to have those people that you can lean on, family, ohana, friends, you know. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. I just started to write things down and I, I did a cold plunge at my house and yeah. that helped me. S sat down, got some sun. The sun felt super yes. good. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you to, to my village, my team. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, so my thing when I get anxiety or I get a little, because I am overwhelmed a lot, and and what I really go to, and it, it probably will be like uh, one of them is vacuuming. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Cleaning, yeah. Yeah. I find so much it's peace therapeutic. in vacuuming, <laughs> um, but I go thrifting. I go okay. thrifting. I go thrifting, and I know that there are more stories to be told that are bigger and better than me, and that I know that if I pick something up, whether it be a dish. 
I just think and dream about who did this dish belong to? What is the mo'olalo behind this dish? If I pick up a piece of vintage clothing, I'm like, who wore this? Who wore this? And how cool were they to have such a beautiful piece of clothing? And if you come to my house, which is like uh, literally like a living goodwill, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that's what I do when I get overwhelmed because I know that there are so many stories to tell and I'm aligned in some way or another to find more stories to tell and find peace that there's so much history and legacy before us and there's so much more to come. Amazing, I love that. Yeah, there's a lot of um, thrift stores too where, where I live, and so I've actually... Oh, Chelsea girl? <laughs> yeah. I'm coming to New York yeah, in no, a couple yeah. months we and we're going thrifting in Chelsea. You gotta teach me how, yeah. Oh, I, Didn't you also host the Goodwill Goes Glam thing? You know what, so crazy, <laughs> Talk About Alignment created a show oh. in again, like a, a really cool, fun show that went back to the community um, all about thrifting. And it was it, two years in a row Emmy nominated because of wow. just the power of the story in that. So I love that you're able to take that. And you take, you know, you take the things that you're passionate about and the stars align somehow mm -hmm. and magically. Yeah, it's like magic. I, I really don't even know how to explain it. But when you are aligned with what you're supposed to do, you meet people at the right time. And it just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the keys to that is, Kilana said this so perfectly, is that you speak things into existence. You speak things. You say, I am going to be this. I am. I am. I am. And if you start your day every day with, I am going to be successful. I am going to be happy. I am going to be abundant. You'll be, if you just change that, it, it sky's the limit again. I believe that, yeah. One thing that I started uh, towards the end of the year, um, I started setting an intention in the morning. My intention the other day on Saturday before I went to F45 to do that challenge was to give it my all. And I gave it my all. I could not walk yeah, for 15 did. minutes. They saw me. I was dying. Like, I've never been. My tongue was numb. That's great it content. Was the, I, and like I said, I, I had to give even more than I had back out. Okay. But it's true. That I bring up that because it's true. Once you, like, set... You gotta speak a goal it. Like I'm that. A, a very also big. Yeah. I don't know if Kelana is, but a very big vision board. Sometimes oh, yes. my friends come over and like you have too many vision boards. <laughs> <laughs> but I really do. Like I'm a very visual person. If if you see, I am strong. You're gonna wake up every day and be like, I am strong. And so these powerful words that you can you can hold yourself accountable for every single moment of your life. It's so helpful, you know. If you stay in the vortex of negativity and the things that don't make you happy, you're gonna your mindset's gonna just go this way. Yeah, I can really attest to that because I mean, 3 years 3 years ago, like covid really, the lockdown really woke me up because before that I was definitely someone that played it safe. I, I never wanted the attention. People would say, "Oh my gosh, you're such a great singer." I'd be like, "Oh, no, 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 no." And and then I always wondered why why nothing ever really happened for me. And and then when I finally switched my mindset and I I think especially in Hawaii, we come from this mentality of if we if we speak highly of ourselves, then it's you know, it, it's either haole or it's like a foreign way of thinking. But but there's a there's a fine line and there's a balance because you know when you speak genuine aloha kindness and um, high about yourself in a way that's humble yet confident, you're not just speaking about yourself. You're speaking about your mom, your dad, the generations that came before you. And for you to downplay yourself, you know, you're downplaying everyone that came before you mm. that paved a way for you to be who you are. Yeah. And um, and so that's the mindset I have in everything I do. And, and so it feels like I'm bringing them with me every single time I can say, yes, I am going to make Hawaii proud. I am going to sing my songs. And they are going to be Grammy-winning things at one point in my life. Oh, girl, <laughs> I got news for you. You make Hawaii so proud. Oh, yes, man, thank yes. you. you so good. So much, thank you. I mean, I'm living proof of speaking it to existence. Before I paid off my student debt, I tweeted, I'm going to pay off $50,000 student loans in one year. Then I'm going to look back at this tweet and high-five myself. And in and 11 did months, high -five I did yourself? that. Now you're going to get all these yeah. high-fives. <laughs> Yay! And then you before go. I started the podcast, I said, I'm going to have the biggest podcast in Hawaii. And, and I know I have the biggest podcast in Hawaii, according to my mom. So that's like... <laughs> <laughs> that counts. <laughs> and but that's all that. that counts. That's all that counts. One of my favorite books uh, is called The Alchemist. Oh, I and, love that book. And in that one, alchemist. you know, there's a couple That's quotes a that one. I take away from it. It's like, um, it's the possibility of having a dream come true mm -hmm. that makes life interesting yeah. or exciting. And then another one is when you want something that the universe conspires Inspire, to help conspires you get exists. it. Yeah. 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 And, Such uh, a great book. Yeah, so that's exactly what you two are thinking. And I think we're all Highly aligned. recommend you read The Alchemist if you want. Yeah, yeah that, really that was book. the one that changed my perspective yeah. too. I think some books that everybody need to read. Alchemist, 
the, the four, um, four agreements, four agreements, four agreements. <laughs> and midlife crisis. <laughs> Written by book. McKenna it's a real book. <laughs> I read it. At, how old are you, Tita? <laughs> I'm gonna be 30 this year. Oh, 30! <laughs> yeah, we're no, it's we're gonna be great. 30s. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Right? No, guys? it's great. I highly recommend me reading the midlife crisis, no matter where you are in life. Uh, it's a really great reminder that nothing's midlife. You can literally be at mm. any age to experience again abundance. I love that. So I wanna be interactive with the audience. I wanna get the audience involved. Usually after we take a shishi break, we go into social media fan questions. This man's bladder. <laughs> hey, when you gotta cool, you gotta cool. Um, so I want to get some live audience questions for our guests. It could be anything. Usually I dive into culture or people ask hard questions. They ask for their social security number sometimes, I credit card information, you whatever you want. And they have to answer it, that's the truth. So oh if, boy. <laughs> if anybody has a question, just raise your hand. I have a, another mic here. Uh -oh. Then I'll pass it around. So any question about the podcast, about their lives, here you go. And then tell me, tell us your name. Here you go. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, my name is Chanel. Hi, Chanel. I'm Hello. from Los Angeles. Oh, hey. hey. Um, and my questions for both, for three of you. Um, what do you want tourists or people from not from Hawaii? What do you want them to know about Hawaii and what they should do outside of Waikiki? That's, That's, a, good. <laughs> That's a good question. Thank you. You want to go first? No, um, ladies first. <laughs> All three of us are answering? Yeah. Oh. Whoever. Um, so the question is, what do we want people to know about Hawaii um, that people don't know? Oh, that we belong here? That we and I'm talking about us in our culture, like when you come and experience this, that feeling that you feel when you feel aloha, that is our culture. That is literally what we live, we breed, that we were born and raised and bred that comes from history, you know? And I think that what I want people to know is like know that there is so much more behind hula skirts and Mai Tais than what is sold to you. And we're changing that narrative. We are working very, very hard to change that narrative. And so I would just encourage people to, before you come here, read a book, read a puke, know, know where you're going to, know the ahupua'a that you're going to, educate yourself um, before you come here to be entertained by our culture, before you come here to be wowed by how beautiful our people are. Um, that's what I would want people to know about. Yeah. Um, exactly that. I think it's, we would love for you to know that we welcome you here. We really do. Um, our people have always been welcoming. You can see that in our history. Uh, we ask that you are just intentional about your time here and what you do here. It is very beautiful and our ancestors have done so much to make sure that it stayed intact the way it is. Um, and we appreciate it. We appreciate the land. We appreciate everything that nature has to offer to us. And so we just ask that, yeah, you take, take some time. You know, enjoy the beach. We love the beach, too. Um, but take some time to, you know, go to the museum or, or actually meet a family. Uh, we love to host. We love to share more about where we're from. Marcella loves to host. Marcella, obviously you've seen. And, you know, and, and, I, and, and an example of that is, you know, now that I, <laughs> now that I am living in, uh, in Brooklyn, in New York, um, I'm really learning about where I'm from. You know, I'm learning about how the Dutch were the first people to, to live in that place. I live in Brooklyn. I learned everything. And, and the demographic of people in my area, they're all Puerto Rican. A lot of them don't even speak English. So I'm taking the time to actually learn Spanish so that I can interact with the people out there. And in that same way. So, like, we ask that if you come to our place, learn a little bit about our culture, too. So, you know? Yeah, those are great answers. I guess the only thing I'd add on that would... <laughs> I guess the only thing I'd add is um, you got to try the pineapple pizza at Lure Street. It's so good, like right down the road, a couple of lefts. There's this really good pineapple pizza place. I love it. <laughs> I'm renegotiating your contract. <laughs> no, I would say that just to be mindful that, yes, this is a vacation destination for a lot of people, but this is home to a lot of us. And just to be mindful of that, come with respect, come with aloha. Try not to make this place like your place, um, because once you try to do that, then you come with these preconceived, you know, notions, these habits. And um, for example, like when I travel and I live abroad, uh, one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn was not everybody thinks like me. Like all my Peace Corps friends from the continent, when they would come over to my house, they'd walk in with slippers, and I'd get so angry. Like, why are you walking in with slippers? That's so disrespectful. But they just don't know. 
So I stopped getting angry at them and just started to educate them, like, hey, this is how we do it. And I think that's like the best thing that us as locals can do instead of yelling at people, scolding them, just say, hey, that's not how we do it here. And if they don't agree with that, then they can go home. You know, like if they don't like it here, then, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone loves it here. Yeah. But yeah, I think to have a good time, just do as the locals do. Yeah. Sponsored by locals. Sponsored by locals. I better get a big box tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Size uh, eight. <laughs> we had another question over, right over there, Oz. Thanks. Yes. Here, you can have these knobs since you answered the question. Yeah. Thank you. Great question. I got question. more in the back for people. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Lola here, Hawaii. Um, two questions. There's a quote that says, what stands, um, what stands in the way becomes the way. So what is one trial that each of you has encountered that has actually become a treasure? And my mm. second question from McKenna, a little birdie told me that there's a Grammy possibly in the making. Um, are you able to elaborate a little bit on that or no? I want to know <laughs> a Grammy in the making. Hey, listen, I'm playing the blue note tonight, <laughs> so my future is very bright. Um, so your first question, and if I can take this first, is like, what's gotten in my way? Myself. Yeah. Mm. Myself. 1,000%. Because when anybody else says, no, you can't do this, I think that I pretty, I'm about to be 43 years old, and I've pretty, pretty much proven everyone who's told me no wrong. Um, but I'm still working on telling myself that you've got this right. And it is an everyday commitment when I wake up to say, you have got this right, girlfriend, and you have to stick through it. It's hard. It's frustrating. I get so... I think we are all emotional, passionate people, but myself stands in my way. And so what I have to do is love her and listen to her and nurture her and know that I have a beautiful family and friends and it makes me so emotional thinking about it. But it's very, very strong lahui um, behind us and the best is yet to come. I live my life by three simple things and I tell you this all the time. Trust your path, walk by faith and always believe your best is yet to come. Beautiful. You gotta go next. <laughs> What's in my way? Um, I don't. I don't really. Know. I reflect a lot, but I don't think I've really thought about that one. Like, it's in my way because I. I just. just I'm not. Go, yeah. I just go. Yeah. I just. One speed, full speed. <laughs> and that's that's really how I am. Mass. Like, if I find something that I'm passionate about, I go in it 100 percent, 110 percent. So to me, there's really nothing ever in my way, but. Honestly, injuries. <laughs> <laughs> Life gets if in I his was to be very honest, I get injured a lot, and uh, I'm injured now. <laughs> so I guess myself <laughs> is the answer. I'm telling you, we are I, our own. Everybody in yeah. this room. You I do just not figured agree it we out. Our own today. Worst enemy. I am my own worst enemy. Yeah, and you know what? We are loved. We are loved. <laughs> we are appreciated, and it all works out. Yeah, I think I have to work at taking better care of myself. Physically? Physically, yeah. Yes. I, I think I got the emotional part down, but literally, <laughs> I have to do better so I could walk when I'm older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, go, I go too hard. Um, I remember hearing this one quote, uh, our greatest fear is that we are... Anyone know how to... Inadequate. <laughs> Inadequate. Yeah. But keep going. Um, anybody know this? <laughs> you... Oh, yeah. yes. What is it? Oh yeah, say it, say it in the mic for us. Oh, right there. oh yeah, say it in Hawaiian, Uncle. Look at Dad coming in clutch. Give it up for Kamaka's dad. What was the quote? What was the quote? Hello, everyone. I'm very glad I'm here. My name's Superstar Rainbow, and I'm probably the youngest one in the crowd, uh, and half of me. So I'm over 25. Or 55, 85, I forgot. So I'm a comedian, realtor, broker, singer, and I'm very frustrated because I've gone viral. I don't know where or what. Uh, a lot of people say they want to be like me, and I'm really feeling I need a manager, and I'm sometimes really smart, and 140, 150, 60 IQ, and sometimes I'm 60, I taught special ed, I'm a special elder. Wow. So I need a manager or something, and I go and people say, I know you, I know you, because I do splits, even though I have a pain in my knee at the moment. So I'm like make or break, and uh, I don't know, you know, sink or swim kind of thing, and I've been here for 36 years. So um, I have different names, Star, um. Carol Star, Superstar Rainbow. And, but you know, I'm not developed and I'm sometimes ready to say, am I going to need assisted living? So um, 
I'd like to have some guidance of how do you get proper management? And I went to Vegas looking for a manager. Uh, you know, my Instagram, TikTok is like there, but I'm not clicking on, I don't have hours to handle it. So how do I make it? Because we're all here to make a difference to each other in the planet. Oh. And uh, I don't know where to actually make that with failure change into success. This is like a bipolar, um, you know, yes, I'm in the peacock or the pigeon. Yes. Well, you aren't, you aren't no. a Mahala Anake. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You are no failure, though. You are loved. Yes. And I think, yeah, exactly. That, um, that quote was, we are... It's not that we... Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I found Thank you, it. Kalana. I found Thank it you. in the noggin. Good, good, good save. Um, th <laughs> Thank you, Auntie, because she wouldn't have got yeah. that without... Yeah. Your help. I needed yes. a little Mahalo. bit of time yeah. to think. But, uh, yeah, I think just, just, just that is, is uh, my potential. I was, I was very worried about stepping into it. I didn't want to. I was afraid of what would come with it, if it would scare people off, if it would make me alone. Um, and so that, yeah, getting in the way of myself. But I was afraid of my potential. But once I learned that uh, there's a reason that you have a gift or you, you have a calling or you feel so drawn to something. And I think if you learn to accept that, and you live it, you, you attract the people, your people, your tribe. And um, so that is what I learned. Thank you Be so what you much. want to attract. Yeah. I want, real quick, I, I'm just like reflecting on the answers. Yeah. I wonder if it's like a boy thing and like a girl thing, how guys are just very reckless. Yeah. Like the kids like, draw, jumping off things, just hurting themselves, think. but you're more like reserved, just trying to think or analytical <laughs> and you have to stop. But I'm just like, Argh. Probably. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering. Okay. Um, we got a question over there. All right, you have to think beyond the shallow. What is your favorite physical feeling to experience? Whoa. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> feeling. I, I love think it. this is G-rated. <laughs> <laughs> this is not keep it aloha after dark yet. We got, we got 11 minutes. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to let Keilana take that one. I, I mean... You go, you go. I'm, honestly, I, I love the feeling after a good workout. Like, there. just after you, My mind went there, you yeah. physically <laughs> accomplish something. Like, you go on a hike and you get to the top. Yes. And then, like, you, for example, the, the playoffs that we did, you finish it, like, it sucks in the moment. But once you're done, it's just this great feeling of accomplishment. And, like, yeah, I did that. I accomplished that. I, my mind might have helped my body get through that. Yeah. But the... That, that feeling, I don't, I mean, I guess it's still like an, a physiological yeah. thing. It's, it's I got you, I got you. Um, thing, I think it's like yeah. after a spin class for me, I take it 9.30 a.m. to Shaw led Body Balance, my new sponsor. <laughs> um, but that feeling, I think like just like all those endorphins that run through you of after like feeling you accomplish something and yeah. you know that's the best physical feeling for, for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is puppies. Puppies. <laughs> puppies are kissing me. That's my favorite physical feeling. Wow. I didn't know that was an, that was an option. You should have gave us physical. multiple choice. Yeah. You took it deep to your childhood. <laughs> Not the putties. Was uh, it my, a yardstick? My, my, wait, that, wait, that was your favorite? Puppies. puppies. Oh, puppies. My, I thought he said putty. Like oh, putty. <laughs> Discipline. <laughs> I, mean, I, hey, I have been putty a time or two, okay? Oh, my. He said puppy. <laughs> Mine is the pump after a workout. <laughs> I gotta go. Puppies. Oh, Did you oh, go? oh yes. Um, my favorite <laughs> feeling. My favorite puppies feeling to and experience. Puppies. <laughs> Here, Lola. Have it's this. totally Don't, different. Oh, totally sorry. Different. Don't give it to Ari, though. Know? <laughs> um, I would say, oh my gosh, my favorite, my favorite feeling is um, joy. When um, joy after after a hardship, I think like you have to know. <laughs> um, so like I said, uh, these last this last month in New York, there was no sun. I was away from family. I moved out by myself, so I didn't really have any family or friends. I had to make friends with the the Spanish people that I made friends with, but we couldn't speak to each other, so it was, just, it was really hard out there, guys. <laughs> but um, but man, was it a joy when I would get those random phone calls from friends back at home, um, just telling me what what they're up to, how I'm doing, checking up on me, um, and even my friends like Jermaine and uh, I have a crew called Infinite Ethos. Uh, that I will be sharing a lot if you follow me on social media. But they have been my family out there, and they would 
reach out to me and be like, hey, Kay, how are you feeling today? Just want to let you know that, you know, you're amazing and, and that you're meant to be here. And I think just having those, those people, that feeling of being seen has been um, the best feeling. So that is my answer to that. Awesome. That's a great answer, Tito. Great, 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 great answer. And I'm back. Okay, we got time for one more question. One more. And we have one bag of noms as well, so. Oh, right over there. Uh-oh. What stand. is your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> well, oh man. I think you have to answer that first. <laughs> oh, that was my mom. <laughs> Gosh, I gotta think about that. You wanna go, Kilana? Okay, Do you have yeah, a most I can go. I moment? can go. When I first started learning how to sing, I was taking singing lessons. There's like head voice and chest voice. I didn't know how to, to go in between the two. Um, and so there's a video of me. I was on Hawaii Stars, uh, and uh, I think it was 2010. And I did not know. I was actually singing the prayer and um, the Hawaiian version. And there's a part where it goes, it's all up in the rafters, and it's like, Ka and then the, the notes below were so low, and I didn't know how to make it nice to go down there. Yeah, I was like, so I was like, it was so gross. I cracked. And that video lives on the interwebs forever. And my sisters, they never live it down. That's like a little inside joke they always tease me about. And I'm like, oh gosh. But yeah, and I didn't win that year. I actually lost to a five year old, but it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. We're fine. You're <laughs> winning. You're winning now. <laughs> Come what, was, Diaz. what was more embarrassing, the loss to the five year old or the actual you like, know, messing up it. on the I think note? all of it together. All of it you know, combined. I was like yeah, 18, yeah. and then the kid was five. And yeah, <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Embarrassing moments. I kind of, uh, I guess ever since I joined the Peace Corps, my mindset has changed a lot. Like I don't have fear except of geckles. Um, and I don't have, like I don't get embarrassed because like I went there and you're the foreigner in the village of all locals. So you kind of have to lose that embarrassed gene. But I guess maybe... I wasn't really embarrassed because I didn't really know, but so in Madagascar, you don't go out to, at night to go to the bathroom because um, you have outhouses, like a hole in the ground and stuff. So you, everybody buys this thing called a pole, which is like a little bucket that has a cover on top. So that's what you, you go in the bathroom at night. So when I got to my site, I had an old one from the previous volunteer that he left but I wanted to buy a new one, so I just went to the market, I biked over there. Actually, I think I walked this time. I biked, I, mean, I walked to the market, got all the, like, the vegetables and everything that I needed, and then I bought a pole. And I just walked through the town with that. <laughs> I walked to like, um, my seje, the, the, the classrooms, and it's like, hey, hi, everybody, just walking casually. And then I, I get to my house. And then later, my host mom was telling me, like, everybody was talking about it. <laughs> I was just walking with the pole. Because I, I guess that's not, like, a normal thing. <laughs> yeah. But again, I, I didn't really feel embarrassed. But I guess it was embarrassing to them. But, yeah. There you go. Don't, hey, don't ask about double dragoning, though. That's to keep it a little after dark. Uh, don't, ask, don't ask me about my horror stories in Peace Corps. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've had many embarrassing moments in my career, but you know what? They all build character, and it's just literally you get you strengthen. Um, but I think one of my most embarrassing was I was covering my first MTV VMA Awards, and I was so excited. Mano Ola crocheted me this one top, and like I was like so excited to be there. And I was like, oh my gosh! Before you know the carpet starts, I gotta go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, and I'm like feeling myself. I'm like all up in this beautiful couture from Hawaii Island. Um, outfit and so I went to the Lua and then I came out and walked the red carpet with toilet paper. <laughs> like toilet paper on my heel down and I was like and then this one girl was like sis <laughs> sis <laughs> that's so funny you say that because you have one of the these little strings from the lay right on your lip. Oh great right thanks there. Kamaka yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah she got it. Thank you. It's I also don't approve any of these clips. <laughs> So no podcast tonight. That was so funny. This the uh, how it's it just worked out with that story. <laughs> thank you. How long was it there? Oh it, no, it just got there. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. But I, I wanted to make sure it was gone. So when we do cut the clips, Yay, you look thank good. Thank you. Yes. Round of applause for Kamaka Diaz <laughs> for putting this all together. You are a Mahalo. very talented young Kanaka. Thank you. I just appreciate all the support. Well, we're wrapping up right now because I'm trying to stay on schedule because, you know, on the podcast, we go long, like two hours, maybe three hours long, and Jordan hates it. 
Just to let you know. It's a lot of work to post, yeah. produce. Yes. So I want to thank Kelana. And I'm going to wrap up with McKenna. But thank you so much. Thank you guys so performing, much. For performing, talking stories, hanging out with us. We'll see you backstage after. Is it gone? Yes. You look great. And then um, this is for Auntie. Oh, here. my mama. I'm not going to throw it to, to you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Beautiful. Kelana. We'll see you. Yay. Another round of applause for Kilana. <laughs> If you guys don't follow her, follow her on yes. social media and go support her music. L A N A. Yes, she's amazing. Okay, so and then there was there was two. I'm then there was this. two. Okay. Is this when things get serious? Yeah, and this is when I ask the super deep existential questions. Ooh. Like, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> to be yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. What does it mean to be Hawaiian? No, just joking. To be yourself. Oh, that that's a good question. Answer, yeah. Nice. I used to I used to think so much that being Hawaiian was a thing. You needed to act a certain way. You needed to be a certain way. I needed to do certain things. But at the convention last year, uh, Auntie Twinkle said, when you give someone kuleana, you awaken their mana. And when she said that, it instantly made sense to me my whole entire life of not, you know, my mom is blonde hair, green eyes. I come from a Hawaiian Filipino family. And I never found a place. I always felt different. I didn't know where I fit in. And once I realized that we are all, every single person in this room, you, you are born with a na'o. You are born with a God-given right to know the difference between right and wrong, to know the difference between good and bad. And I think once you align to that, like, you become, I'm an abundance activist, and once you realize that there is so much more um, than to just, to just being Hawaiian, to just being a person, to just being human, to just trusting your na'o, oh my gosh, I'm still learning this lesson every day, but it's the most important lesson, lesson that I've signed up for. I love that. That, I mean, that's a good answer. It's, it's something that we talk about all, all the time on the podcast. But at the end of the day, when I have all these conversations, 100 something episodes, I'm like, we're really just talking about being good humans. Yeah, really? Like, what is aloha? Being a good human. It really what is. is. Yeah, kind, being kind. You don't have to be a kind Hawaiian, you just gotta be a kind human. Yeah, so so I think that's like the biggest thing that I've learned over my travels, over all these conversations. Just, just be a good person. It doesn't matter your blood, your ethnicity, how you look, where you're from. Just be a good person. Absolutely. Be like Marcella, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> right, Marcella, like Marcella. Round of applause if she's, oh, she's left already. <laughs> she but left Marcella, already. no, I think what she said too, like, it's just so important, you know, like, the, what I've learned in my career, which is now spanning over 20 years, as you had mentioned, is that, like, literally, like, everyone just don't wants, j everyone just wants to be heard. Everyone just wants to be respected. Every just, everyone just wants to know that, we meet at this space, no matter where you are. Like, we meet at this space and this frequency. And if we can all align to this frequency that I think we Hawaiians like to call aloha, the world would just be a totally different place. And this frequency is hard to keep up with because there are things that just want to shoot you down and not be positive and be very negative. But if you find that right frequency, we can all meet there. No, I love that. Again, that's a great answer. And I think that's another thing that I noticed from social media is that people want to be heard. Like, whether you ask them or not, like, we'll, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that, I can't believe you said that, you know, back in the day, the history of this, this. I'm like, I just asked what your favorite pizza is. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just, they, they just need a reason to get something out. And for us, we have the platform. We have the platform where we're able to express ourselves. And sometimes... The comment section is where people try to express themselves because, like you said, they want to be heard. So I want to know, what is your favorite part about the thing that you do, your job? Because you get to talk to a lot of people. You get to connect. I think the favorite part of my job is I am so grateful of being able to do what I do and... Um, I think it's just that, is making people people feel special and making people feel heard and loved and respected. And um, sometimes you don't quite give that to yourself as you're learning sometimes, right, in like what you do. But my favorite part of this job is like literally walking into Long's at Kamehameha Shopping Center and being like, where's your dad? <laughs> you know, or just hearing. And I think that that's what I love uh, the most and like, sharing you know with how special we are and the people that that come from this place and then knowing and taking a, a, a step back and being like 
people appreciate this. And even if you aren't being the person that you spoke to, you appreciating that Kamaka is asking me these questions and you getting just a little nugget of life lessons or coaching or something that you can take home and inspire yourself, your family, your friends to talk about, that's my favorite part. I love that. I mean, you're just killing it with these answers at the, at the end of this You're podcast. You're so yeah. emotional. I needed this. We, we, we get deep at the end of the podcast. <laughs> it's about that time. Yeah, yeah. Shots, 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 <laughs> shots, shots, shots. Okay, speaking of that, because we do have to wrap up. Um, before I get to my uh, last Fast Fave 5 questions. Oh, um, you prepared, Komaka. I'm always prepared. You always. But they said that you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Oh. Yeah. He's okay. going to make that his next shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm taking 20%. <laughs> as, as everything you, uh, we've already done. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we end the podcast, I always have to ask people, what is their life hack? And I, I usually have a pre-production call, and I tell people to prepare a life hack. But you've already been on the podcast, and I think I started the life hack thing before that. Um, but I didn't tell you to prepare one today. But if you do have one, can you share <laughs> Not no, I, and I, I mentioned this with this, and I, I have to remind myself, and even, you know, right now in this chapter of my life, you know, I, I sit back, and as I sit in Keep It Aloha podcast with Kamaka Diaz, I see how uh, the things that I've done in my career has helped, you know, young men like you who've come in, and, and it's all a part of a kako thing, right? But I can't stress enough, and I have to remind myself every day that my life hack is to trust your path, walk by faith, and always believe your best is yet to come. And if I didn't have that or if I didn't tell myself that every day, I probably wouldn't be sitting here next to you right now. So I'm going to stick with that one. Well, I'm going to keep doing that because I like where you're at. So Thank you. I will follow in those uh, footsteps. <laughs> you're, like my, you're like my therapist today. <laughs> it, How much are you an hour? <laughs> you're already getting royalty, so it's fine. <laughs> We'll, we'll take it off. Who thinks we'll Kamak and I should host a television show together? <laughs> yeah. We're no. going to speak that into existence. Hey, just give me the call. Uh, okay, so I have my last fast fave five questions. These are just rapid fire answers, okay? <sighs> All right. Favorite karaoke song? Shoop. Oh, shoop, shoop, that one? Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay. Here I go, here I go, here, here I, I go, go again, go. girls. What's my weakness? I said that, chilling, chilling, minding my business. I thought I looked away, but I couldn't believe this. I swear, I swear. A brother had it going on with that. Okay, now you get it. If it was in Hawaiian, I could have answered it. <laughs> that was Did awesome. I just kill that? No. Yes. And I there, played my first Blue Note show. <laughs> the Grammy nomination coming oh, soon. <laughs> see you 2024. Gosh. You performed on the Blue Note stage. Yeah, with yeah. Kamaga Diaz. Life yeah. changing. Yeah. Okay, favorite post show snack? Um, alcoholic or non alcoholic? <laughs> is alcohol a snack? <laughs> yeah. It okay. Is. Um, Tito soda with oh lime? Oh, gosh. Tito soda lime. Thank you. Post alcohol? I don't know. We, I, I'm a very big poo poo person. My dad always cooks so much for us. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that my dad is my Uber Eats. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really cool. But post snack poke always. Mm, solid. Okay, favorite Hawaiian word? Hulali, reflect light. And that's what you do. Thank favorite you. way to recharge? Wow. <laughs> that's my dad. <laughs> my dad said shots, which by the way, when I was like of age and I'd have a coffee, be like, you need a shot. <laughs> Um, my favorite way to recharge is travel, you know, mm -hmm. to get out, like I, I lived away, you know, I moved away a couple days after I turned 18 and to really recharge and just see, cause you know, we're here in Hawaii and we, we are in this bubble, which is so beautiful, but sometimes we, we can experience crabs in a bucket. We can experience a little bit of the negativity. We can get into the vortex of gosh, we're not going anywhere. And for me to recharge, to go travel, to experience other cultures really recharges me. I love that. We have our last question here, and I just realized that I think the we had 90 minutes, and I was thinking that's 9 o'clock, <laughs> but I forgot we started at 7. <laughs> so thanks uh, for yes. sticking around, everybody. <laughs> 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 I was like, nice, we're only five minutes over. <laughs> that's okay. You got new sponsors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of laughs, too, which are priceless. Okay. Um, and this is why I, I decided to go into this segment already, because you mentioned the after stuff. So favorite after party venue? 
Where are we going after this? TJ's. I love that place. And you know what I do? And I give it so much shout outs. And they are not my sponsor. Um, Yet. (laughs) um, It's because I love a good dive bar. And I love where you can go. And you can feel like you're someplace. And I just love how much camaraderie is shared. And the same goes for Blue Note. You know, we're a little separated here with the darkness and the tables. But anywhere where you can run into friends, you know, like it's like my local cheers. I love that. Okay, well... Find McKenna after that if you guys want to um, party at TJ's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for everybody here, I want to mahalo you for coming out and showing support because it means so much to us. Like, this is the first time doing something like this. And well, you just did to have an people in the, in the audience, it means a lot. And Shaka T donated a lot of cans. So after this, we can go to the gift shop. We have merch over there. We'll be cruising over there if you want to talk stories, take pictures. I also brought some of my books. Uh, I wrote a book after um, coming back from the Peace Corps called So Far. So it's available for purchase over there. And then some Keep It Low merch. Uh, and I think, let's see, I don't know, know what the math is, but everybody can get like three or four cans of shaka tea each, I think. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a lot. We, I think we have 300. So if somebody wants to do a head count, and then we can divide that equally. <laughs> but honestly, just grab what you want. If you end up grabbing 10, that's fine. If you end up grabbing two, I think it'll work out. So and just make sure you grab some on your way out, because I don't want to take it all. <laughs> And before I go, I just want to say, you know, I, I don't, I, I get asked to do some of these things. And I, and I really did do this because Komaka texted me in December and he said, hey, McKenna, I want to do this. And you really, you know, when you talk about purpose and intention, like you really are like an example of what, like when, you know, I, I was led by mentors and people and you really are what the next generation of Hawaii is all about. And I'm so proud of you. And I really oh. wish you nothing but the best. So thank, thank you. Thank you. You're make me cry now. <laughs> Welcome to the crying team. <laughs> yeah. Mahalo, everybody, when, for being here. This is a great crowd. This is a great crowd. You guys were awesome. I, I knew I had to get McKenna because Josh Satofi was busy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that again? Yeah, who? Josh who? <laughs> but when people ask me when I go on other podcasts or they just ask me who are your favorite guests, uh, you're always at the top of that list because you're just so good at what you do and you're easy to talk story with. That's why you are the queen of talk story. I'll take it. At least it. labeled I'll by me. It. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So, mahalo, everybody. Make sure you go and grab all that stuff that I mentioned. Mahalo to the Blue Note for hosting us. I appreciate it. All the workers Tip over your here. servers. You guys, I was, your sitting, bartenders. I was sitting here watching a show one day and I was thinking, wow, it would be really cool to host a podcast up here and... Here we are. You spoke it into existence. Yeah. Mahalo, everybody. Oh, so, <laughs> oh no, I gotta do the itch. Oh. It's stuck. Calm down. <laughs> I got like, my I got my thing. Oh, my bad. Okay, okay wait, what camera am I? <laughs> okay. Is there anything that you want to share bef- say it before we wrap up? If not, tell a, tell tell them where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on social media <laughs> at Makenna Maduli at everything. You can watch all of Talk Story at talkstorynow.com. And again, the best is yet to come. Okay. Mahalo McKenna for joining us on the Keep It Love podcast. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. Tonight, we have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and remember to always keep it aloha. Cheers! That's a wrap. Thank you.